Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. <clears throat> Wait for people to jump on here, everybody getting their notifications, hopefully. I feel like joining the live chat. Hello, Lisa Pimento. How are you doing? Hello, Susan Mine. How are you? It's crazy. There's two of you, and it showed there for a second there was nobody in the uh, watching. Hello, Jennifer Sanders. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? I'm good. I'm glad to hear that, Lisa. Hello, Sarah Danielle. Uh, I'm doing well. We're gonna have another 63 degree day today. So I'm excited to get out there and do some more uh, garden work. I'm getting really close to being done bordering in my uh, <clears throat> my gardening rows, and I'm going to try to get another one done today. My arm feels a little bit shot, though, from all the, the work, but whatever. Oh, dude, check this out. Oh, what well, well, wrong way? That, isn't that cool? This is like the coolest, spiffiest, cheapest shirt I've ever had. Isn't that awesome? It's got the three nails on it. It's like a bowling shirt. It reminds me that you can call me the uh, the big jo Josh Kowski. The big Josh Kowski. I'm just kidding. Thanks, Sarah Danielle. I appreciate it. That's very kind. Maybe look a little bit like John Goodman. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm kidding. He's, that dude's totally Illuminati now. He was like out of the media for a while and then all of a sudden come back in all these different movies. And yeah. So any prayer requests this morning? Actually, I, I have a prayer request that I, I want to put out there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'd rather let other people go first. But I, I have a, I have one uh that's that's pretty important that I wanna to bring up. <clears throat> Hello, Night Love. Good morning. Maybe the chat froze up or something. I don't know. I wonder if we uh, got any cyber attacks going on. Just curious. It doesn't look too bad today. I mean, YouTube's getting hit, of course, but can everybody hear me okay? Good gravy. That water comes out fast. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Jennifer, of course, dear Jesus, Holy Father, we pray for Jennifer Sanders and her husband in Jesus mighty name that this cough that they have will go away. Uh, I pray that, uh, Jesus, you reach into their lungs and you, and you help them to, to get better quickly, Lord. You let your Holy Spirit be with them. Let your blood cover them, Lord. Uh, we just pray for a fast, quick healing, Jesus. We pray for, uh, immunities to be built up. We rebuke sickness in Jesus mighty name and we pray that your will be done, Lord. Amen and amen. Yeah, coughs are nasty. Something I will share with you. This is just a small pinch of news. Just a small pinch. Give me one second here. Boy, I need a haircut. Good gravy. I have to have my wife cut my hair tonight. She's always so awesome about that. i just been forgetting. Um, hold on a second. I want to read you guys something that was sent to me this uh, in the middle of the night. Um, I'm going to block out the names uh, or the name of the school and all that stuff. Um, hold on one second. So it says, Dear Parents, I hope this message finds you well. I am writing to inform you about a situation that has arisen in our school community. All right. I'm not going to tell you what school this is from, but, but you need to know this. All right. Uh, over the past week, there has been a significant increase in absences among both students and staff due to illness. 
particularly affecting our elementary building. Today, we reached a concerning level of student absences with some classrooms having as few as five students present. All right, I've been telling you lockdowns are going to come. I don't, don't think I was still lying. Don't think it was, it's gone away. Um, hold on one second. In response to this situation and in the interest of safeguarding the health and well-being of our students and staff, we have made the decision to close so-and-so public schools from Wednesday, March 13th through Friday, March 15th. Our priority during this closure period will be thoroughly to thoroughly clean and sanitize the school buildings to mitigate the spread of illness. What does that sound like? It literally sounds like the lockdown the last time, all right? I know this is supposed to be a prayer live, but I wanted you guys to, to hear this. We understand that this closure may cause inconvenience. Oh, yeah. And we sincerely apologize for any disruption to your plans, your patience, and support during this challenging time hmm, are greatly appreciated. We will resume regular school activities on Monday, March 18th, and we will keep you updated with any further developments. In the meantime, if you have any questions or concerns, please do not, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for understanding and your cooperation. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? And I'm going to tell you this. This is not far from where I'm at. And then you also have uh, one of my wife's best friends is a teacher. And their school is seeing the exact same thing. Completely different area, exact same thing. I'm telling you, people, it, it ain't going away. Uh, Susan Mine says, hey, Josh, I'm sorry about yesterday. I tried to stay on the live. I left my phone on your channel. When Unexpected Company came over, I rewatched the video. Thank you for your Bible teaching us. No problem, Susan Mine. No problem. You don't ever have to apologize. You know, people come and go as they please. You know, you don't ever have to apologize. Um, no problem, Jennifer. No problem. Hello, Steve Lopez. Good morning. Just stopped by to say hi. The, the hit the like. Back to work. God bless you, Steve. You have a good day. Thank you for dropping in and saying hi. Um, any other prayer requests this morning? Anything at all? Good morning, Barb Forever. Good to see you, sister. And Barb Forever, just reminding you, because I know you're a new moderator, uh, you click on the name of somebody that you want to delete their comment. If people are out of control, people saying things that go against the Bible, anything like that, just, you know, you click on their comment. Uh, and then there's uh, options that will pop up that can give you choices of what to do. And you can even put people in a timeout, I believe. I, I do believe that. Uh, hello, Carl McWinnie. Um, we all pray Jesus comes soon. We all pray Jesus comes soon. But there's no telling when. We just got to be about the Father's business. I think, Carl, if we stay busy enough in the Lord, if we're reading Scripture and uh, fellowshipping with other brothers and sisters in Christ enough, uh, and, and, uh, uh praying and, and just being an active Christian, witnessing, teaching, preaching, uh, I'll tell you, it goes by a lot quicker. It really does. And there's some joy in it. We can find some joy in this, in this, uh, world that's, that's, uh, so fallen, you know what I mean? We can shine a little light here, you know, we really can. Um, Nightlove says, I would appreciate some prayers. Me and my wife are trying to have a child. And he, oh, yeah, of course. Dear dear Jesus, Heavenly Father, we pray for Nightlove in Jesus' mighty name that you will open his wife's womb up in Jesus' mighty name, that you will uh, cause Nightlove's seed to be abundant, Lord, and that uh, you will help them uh, uh, be able to have that baby in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, whether it be boy or girl, Lord, is up to you, Jesus, is up to uh, what you decide, but I pray that you would bless them with a the child in Jesus' mighty name. I, I know what it was like when I wanted to have my son, and uh, I'm just so thankful to have him, even though he can be a pain in the keister sometimes. Absolutely love him 100%, uh, and, and you got to take the good with the bad, or the bad with the good, but I'll tell you right now, uh, it's, a, it's a joy uh, to be a parent, and, and I pray that for you uh, and your wife, Night Left, that you uh, both will be able to have a child. Uh, that that your wife will become fertile in Jesus' mighty name, and that the uh, that the Lord will make a way where there seems to be none. 
And I, I pray that it happens soon. I pray that it happens soon. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Um, <clears throat> any other prayer requests this morning? Anybody got anything going on? Because I'm going to throw one out there that I have, and it's going to take a while to pray about it. It's something that's more of a spiritual warfare situation uh, because it's a pretty serious situation, I believe. It's just something I felt that, you know, I had a dream last night and it was about a specific friend, uh, my buddy Rick, and uh, I feel that his family is in danger uh, and I'm going to come to the Lord about it, but I want to make sure everybody gets their prayer requests in and all that stuff. And then I'm going to, I'm going to pray for my brother, Rick. I agree, Josh. Plus you feel better by not being overly worried about the happenings in the world. I agree, Barb. Yeah. Just being about the father's business. Yeah. That's what Jesus did. They, when uh, Jesus didn't make it back to home with his with Mary and Joseph, Mary and Joseph were like, "Whoa, where's Jesus?" And they go back to the temple, you know, because they were celebrating one of the the feasts. And they go back to the temple, and they find Jesus there talking with the people in the temple, and they're like, "Where were you, Jesus?" He's like, "Oh, it's about my father's business." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, can you imagine that? You know, what a blessing! What a blessing! We're going to do some more reading out of the book of Mark today. We're going to start with the uh, where we left off, chapter 11 of the book of Mark. I'm really excited to do that. I, I love reading to you guys, in fact. I think it's fun. Uh, it's an encouragement to me. It gets the word of God in me more often. Um, you know, and, and someone the other day, you know, asked about, you know, reading scripture. And it just kind of sparked a fire in me. I'm like, man, you know what? I haven't been reading scripture this whole time, and we could have been. You know, I, I love reading the Bible. So it's something that I, I think is an important thing. You know, they say if you read the Bible consecutively day after day, things start to change within you. They really do. Oh, that's fine, Barb. No problem. No problem. I actually uh, I have uh, three openings for for moder for moderators. And so I'm going to be snatching some up possibly today. I don't know. Depending. Um, hello, Harper Ann. Good morning. Good to see you. <clears throat> Hope everybody's doing well today. Any prayer requests real quick? Cause I'm going to, I'm going to throw my prayer request out there in a moment. And I'm going to ask that people agree with me in prayer because uh, I'm really worried about a certain situation with one of my friends. So. Yeah, it's good to see you too, sister. Good to see you too. <clears throat> Hello, John Misick. Good to see you. Oh, DC traffic is the worst. Glad you could join the live for a little bit, brother. Hello, Aaron Wolf. Been a while since we've been there, or since we've seen you. Good to see you. Just grateful to be here with you guys on this beautiful morning the Lord has made for us. Amen. Amen, brother. Yeah, it's a beautiful morning here. Sun shining bright, and it's going to be 63 degrees today. I'm excited about that. I mean, I was in a tank top and shorts yesterday. It was so hot I had to take a couple breaks and cool down. I, I don't like the feeling of being overheated, man. That that bothers me. I work hard until I'm like, you know, pouring sweat. And then it's like, well, time to sit in the hammock for a while and cool down. It was really breezy out yesterday, so I'm hoping it's just as windy today. Oh, cool, Aaron Wolf. We got a lurker. We got a lurker. <laughs> I'm the same way. Usually when I'm, you know, unless it's like my uh, pepper shows and things like that, like my chili pepper shows, uh, I usually don't chat too much, uh, you know, because arguments start really easily, it seems like for me. Like people don't always like what I have to say in other chat rooms. Really enjoy the live streams. Appreciate that, Aaron Wolf. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I'm surprised, man, because your Indiana's below below me and. We're getting pretty warm weather up here. I know downstate, uh, 
they were, you know, I was told that it was pretty warm yesterday, like almost 70. They sure are night love. Hammocks are the best. Absolutely love them. I had a tree fall down in my yard when we first moved here, and I hacked up two trunks and then stuck them in the ground, and I hang my hammock from that. Hey, be resourceful, you know. You're supposed to get rain today. 60% chance. Please pray for rain. We pray that Barb Frevert's area gets rain in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Let the skies open up, Lord, and dump that rain. <clears throat> I'm going to check my weather real quick. I'm curious to see where we're at here. Yeah, still 63 degrees, but... It doesn't look like any rain in, in the, uh, the forecast. And it looks like it's going to be a partially sunny or partially cloudy day all the way up until about when I'm done gardening. So that's good. Hello, Su Sister Susan. Good to see you. Welcome. Hello, Sister Jan. Good to see you. I'm about 12 minutes late and speed playing to catch up. Nice shirt, Josh. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's got the... Uh, I keep you everything's reversed with this camera. So I'm like the I'm like the live chat over here, but it's over here, you know, and I'm trying to show you the logo on my shirt and I'm pointing over here and it should be over there. But uh it's got three nails on it and then across. And I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, hey. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. It was like, I think like eight or nine dollars. And I was like, man, you can't beat that. And it's and it's really comfortable. I actually got another one too, I'll show you. Hold on. Hold on. I got this one, too. And it's got, like, the sky and stars. I thought it was pretty cool. Hello, True Norther. Good morning. Good to see you. Hello, Vanessa. Good to see you. All right, so I'm going to throw a prayer request out there this morning, and it's going to lead into doing some rebuking of the devil. I had a dream uh, that I'm concerned for the safety of, uh, thank you, Vincent, that I'm concerned for the, I'm not going to look at the live chat here. I got to, I want to focus on uh, what I'm saying, but I am concerned for the safety of my friend uh, and his family. And, and his name's Rick. And that's all I'm going to say. Uh, that's, that's all I think I should be saying about it. And, uh, you know, I'm concerned that they're being prayed against and, and attacked by witchcraft. And, and it's not him. It's not anything that he'd allow in his house, but I'm talking like people, elsewhere in his life, you know, sending demonic entities to attack him. I, I, I have a feeling it's going on. I had a dream. I felt that the Lord showed me, woke me up out of a sound sleep. And uh, I, I want to ask for prayers. Uh, if you guys will agree with me in prayer for my brother, Rick, he means a lot to me. He's a very close friend of mine. Uh, and, and I want to pray for him this morning. Um, hello, Krista. I want to say hi real quick. I don't want to ignore anybody, but I'm going to, I'm going to focus on this now. Uh, dear Jesus, Heavenly Father, we come to you right now and we just lift Rick and his uh, uh, wife and daughters and son up before you. We uh, lift their dogs up before you, Lord, even. Uh, we lift their home up before you, Lord, their property up before you. And I just ask you, Jesus, just to dwell with this family, just to let your Holy Spirit dwell with them, Lord. Let your blood cover them, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit cover them, Lord. We just rebuke the enemy. We rebuke Satan. Ooh, I feel the Holy Spirit. We rebuke Satan and everything that he stands for, every assignment that's been sent to destroy this family. I come against in the name of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus Christ be against you. I bind all witchcraft spirits and all uh, uh, spirits that aren't of God. I bind them in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, God, to cast them away. We cast them away from this family in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray for uh, 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 a move of God that's so great in this family's life that what Satan has intended to do uh, to uh, 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 come at my brother Rick and his family, the Lord will turn around for his glory, will squash this thing like a bug. Uh, we'll, we ask you, Jesus, to stomp on Satan's head and, and, and not allow him to attack this family. Uh, I pray that these spirits are sent back to hell where they came from. They have no authority over this uh, blood-bought family by, by the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we just give you all the glory, Lord, for the victory that's happening, that's going to happen. And I just rebuke everything that's uh, 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 coming against this family. I pray for, for job transitions to go well, Lord. I pray for uh, a, a raise 
to come so that way the finances can be met that, that are needed to keep his household running. I pray that his vehicles stay running in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for good health over his wife, good health over his daughters, good health over his son, and good health over him in Jesus' mighty name. I pray that his hunting season is abundant and that he gets everything that he needs, Lord, that he can pack his freezers full to feed his family. I pray for a, a victory over his situation. And I just uh, once again ask you, Lord, to, uh, uh, to stand uh, with us. And, and we rebuke the devil and his angels. We rebuke all principalities and powers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places that's trying to come against my brother Rick. We will not stand for it in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, uh, we ask you, Lord, to just uh, uh, surround him with your love. Surround him with your mercy and your grace and your peace and your joy that surpasses all understanding, Lord. And I pray that he has a blessed day. And I pray that all stumbling blocks and traps that have been set forward in his path to keep him from moving forward with what he's got to move forward with, Lord, that you will remove those and you will make his path straight, that you will draw back your bow against his enemies and you will not let one of his enemies defeat him. I rebuke the spirits of Freemasonry in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke the spirits of the occult in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke the spirits of secret societies in Jesus' mighty name, that they have no hand or say in my in my brother's life in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And I ask for everybody to stand with me in prayer and, and to say a prayer for Rick right now and his family. He's, he's a godly man. He loves the Lord. Very knowledgeable man in the Lord. And uh, uh, I just pray that you'll stand with me uh, uh, and, and, and pray against the enemy. Uh, and, and the attacks of the enemy that have been set forward to try to attack my brother. I won't have it in Jesus' mighty name. All, all uh, witchcraft prayers that have been prayed against his family, I cancel them right now in Jesus' mighty name. I cancel them right now. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over the situation. And that Holy Spirit, you will fill his home, that you will fill his property, uh, and that you will fill, fill his vehicles everywhere he goes, that the Holy Spirit will go and, and will go before him uh, defeating his enemies and, 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 and uh, uh, keeping him safe. We pray for his protection wherever he's at. And I pray that you continue to use him, Lord, uh, in the ways that you've set him for to use him in these last and final days. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for everybody that, that stood in prayer with me. Uh, it means so much to me. It really does. It means so much to me. It's an encouragement to see everybody standing with me for Rick. Uh, I love my brother Rick so much. He means so much to me, man. He's, he's a very uh, uh, intelligent person, very wise, knows a lot about the scriptures. And and boy, oh boy, I'll tell you, when when there's been a couple of times where we're like, you know, I wouldn't say it's a disagreement, but I'd say, oh, well, I say the Bible says this. And he says, well, I say the Bible says that. And we wrestled for about an hour and a half in the scriptures. And when we were done, dude, we were soaking in sweat. We were both like, man, we're going to go take showers after this one. He's like, I have never talked to somebody and sat here and sweat it out like that. Uh, man, I'm telling you, we wrestled in the word for a while. We had, I had my concordance out and I'm like, but this says this. And you know, it, it, it was something else. And, and, and uh, he's a true blessing to my life and I love him so much. Thank you, sister Jan. Uh, I hope I'm doing this right. Yeah. It's got uh three nails that make a cross. I thought that was really cool. It's my big Josh, Josh Kowski shirt, the big Josh Kowski. <laughs> But yeah, uh, thank you for standing with me, brothers and sisters, uh, in prayer for Rick. And anybody who's re-watching this uh, uh, live after it's already played, if you would say a, pr a prayer for my brother Rick, uh, it would sure mean a lot to me. Uh, sure would mean a lot to me. And I, and I love each and every single one of you. Uh, you guys mean a lot to me as well. You guys are my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way than have uh, be standing with you guys side by side in these last days. I absolutely wouldn't have it any other way. I uh, can't wait to meet you all in heaven face to face and give you a big old bear hug. I'm a big guy. I'm 6'3", and I'll pick you up, squeeze you like a teddy bear. All right. Amen and amen. Uh, thank you, Sister Susan. Thank you, Sister Susan. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, Harper. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Karsten Jesperson. Thank you, Jan. Uh, Jan, I got the shirt from Timu. It was like eight or nine dollars, something like that. And then I'll, I'll just, I'm going to show off the other one that I got. I want to get a couple more eventually because I want to, I want to wear these during the lives. I honestly, I'm going to kind of keep them on coat hangers in here. But you know, I got this one right here, and it's got a cross on it, and it's got the sky, and it's got, it's got stars and stuff. Whoops, sorry, it's all reverse. But yeah, there's that one. So they're only like eight or nine bucks each. 
and, and someone supported the ministry and the Lord says, I want you to wear something nice. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Thank you, Harper Ann. Thank you so much. Amen, John. And I, and I pray that these, uh, thank you so, so much, Vanessa. Thank you so, so much, uh, Barb, for, for adding him to your prayer list. That means a lot. truly does. I actually, I'm going to get a hold of Brett Ransom, the guy that, that spoke that sermon that I showed the other day in my last video that I made. And uh, I'm going to get a hold of him and ask him and his, his people to pray for Rick, too. Rick needs a lot of prayer. He really does. <clears throat> they really do, Barb. But they also have, uh, you have to understand with Timu, it's kind of like a marketplace. It's kind of like eBay in a way. You don't, it's cheap, super cheap. But uh, there's all sorts of sellers on there. And so there's stuff that's not Christian. But if you're looking for Christian stuff, they, they just continue to show you Christian stuff. You know, they do. They have a lot of different cool pictures and stuff. Uh, I got one for $6 and then I got one for $4 that I'm going to hang on the wall up here above uh, uh, my computer. Because uh, a lot of times I'll come in here and I'll pray and I'll seek the Lord's face. And I want something to look at that's encouraging to me, something that speaks to me, not just like behind me. See, like behind me, uh, I just, I, you know, it's not like a set. I use all these books and DVDs and, and different things. But what behind me, I have stuff that's kind of like a plethora of stuff. There's some conspiracy. There's, there's pictures of Jesus. There's, you know, my Israeli flag, different stuff like that. I got a a statue of Jesus up here holding a couple of children. I absolutely love that. My wife's grandmother gave it to me, um, you know, and, and so there's just different things that, uh, uh, you know, and down here a lot on this shelf right here all along it, you know, it has a lot of the different, you know, Christian knickknacks that I have and stuff and my shofar and uh, different things like that. And so it's, it's uh, it's just a thing that I, a, a way that I can show everybody what End Times talks about just by my background, you know. We got some movie posters, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, uh, subliminal content and movies and we expose conspiracies. So it's just kind of a, a, a hodgepodge of stuff, uh, you know, so that, that's why I like to uh, uh, have that like that. But uh, what I want to look at is, is solely focus on Jesus, like right here. Uh, next to my computer. And I, I think I've shown people this before. This was my mother's before she died. We actually picked it up for her at a Christian bookstore. But I got the, the Prince of Peace picture right there. Absolutely love that. Aki Ann painted that. Uh, and uh, the young boy uh, that was in that uh, uh, book and movie, Heaven is for Real, uh, he said that's exactly what Jesus looks like when he was sh shown him that picture by his father. And then right here on the other side of my computer, uh, my grandmother gave this to me and uh, uh, she gave me this and it's just such an amazing picture, you know, and you can see the man that has the nails and the hammer in his, in his hands and Jesus is just holding them up. You know, these these kind of things really encourage me. We've got some great Christian artists out there and I like to I like to look at, at good art and whatnot. So, yeah. Uh, same Josh, my appointment is a reminder of Christ all over the place. Yep, exactly. Yeah, Timu is pretty cool, and, and there's people that say, "Oh, there's they're using slave labor and all this stuff and and uh, whatnot." All right, hold on. All right, so. Hold on. Trying to make sure I haven't missed any uh, prayer requests. I'm just looking real quick. Oclartse. Oclartse. I, I don't know how to say that right. Oclartse. My friend David is not into Jesus. It's going to take a lot to convince him he is angry. Well, we pray that the Lord softens his heart in Jesus' mighty name and that he comes to know you, Lord, that you will draw him by your Holy Spirit, that you'll cover him with your blood, Lord, and surround him with your Holy Spirit, that hit the blinders of the world that have been on his eyes for so long will fall off. The scales will fall off his eyes. We pray that the truth of Jesus uh, shines through, Lord, and that he sees, the, sees your glory, Lord, and that he wants nothing but Jesus. In your mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. And I'm going to believe that. I'm going to believe that for breakthrough for your brother, David. I am. Um, hey, Clayton Joseph. Good to see you. Didn't see you till now. Everyone, God bless you. I'll be a little bit of time 
I'll be a little bit of time while I'm working. No problem. No problem. Good to see you, Clayton. Good to see you, brother. Okay, Jen. All right. You can add me to your prayer list, too. I have battles with what's-his-face. I don't know who what's-his-face is. Uh, my name is Jen. Okay. Dear Jesus, Holy Father, we pray for Jen. <clears throat> and we just ask you, Lord, to help her. Uh, with the situation she's got going on, Lord, you know exactly what's going on. And we trust in you, Jesus. We pray for uh, strength for her. We pray that you walk with her. We pray that you uh, will go before her and make her path straight, Lord, that you'll re remove stumbling blocks before her, Lord, that you'll keep the things of the enemy out of her life and that you will help her to be surrounded with godly, God-fearing people. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that the things that are of the world will fall off and fall away and that more and more of you uh, will shine through. We rebuke the devil and all of his angels. We rebuke all principalities and powers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And we pray for victory over the enemy for Jen. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Yeah, I absolutely love Brother Clayton Joseph. He's he's becoming quite the rock star. <laughs> oh, my brother Clayton, I love you, man. I can't wait to be with you in heaven, bro. For real. I got a big heart for Brother Clayton Joseph. If you have not gone to Clayton Joseph's channel, all right, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, just look up Clayton Joseph. It's spelled with an E, C-L-E-Y-T-O-N, Joseph. Look up Clayton Joseph, and please go subscribe to his channel. Uh, he makes awesome videos, Holy Spirit-inspired videos, uh, does such a great job, uh, and, and, I, and I just hope that people will go check him out. Uh, he he's a, a brilliant man. He he's bilingual. He speaks Portuguese, but is fluent in English, and uh, tells you information that's going on in Brazil that you wouldn't hear anywhere else because he can translate it to English for you and help you to understand. So uh, go check out his channel and subscribe. <clears throat> Amen, Sister Vanessa. Amen. Okay, thank you for clarifying that, O'Clark. I'll just call you Jen. It's easier. Thank you, Jen, for clarifying that. Harper Ann says, when I was five years old, sitting on my grandmother's bed, she told my mom she wanted me to have her, mur have her mural of Jesus preaching the Sermon on the Mount. It's over 70 years old. Oh, wow, yeah. I got a couple of pictures of Jesus up here. There's two of them. You wouldn't see them. They're way up above my window. Uh, but they're like, they're antiques. They're absolutely antiques. Now, I'm not worried about value or anything like that. I don't have a frame for them. So I put tape over the corners, clear tape, and then I tacked them up. So that way it protected the, protected the image in the corners. Uh, hi, everyone. Sorry for the late response. My boss came to talk to me for a minute. Happy to be with all of you here. Happy to, happy to have you here, Brother Clayton. Happy to have you here. We need to get on the phone again, Brother Clayton. You owe me a chit-chat. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But I definitely love to talk with you and catch up. I love talking with my mother or my brother from another mother in Brazil. Love Brother Clayton. Awesome guy. Godly man. Loves his wife. Good to his wife. I love how tender and, and loving he is towards his wife when we talk. Super patient with her. And she's super patient with him. Uh, she's a crown on his head, man, I'll tell you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Clayton, uh, just I, and I don't have my notifications set up on my Facebook uh, messenger because people will message me at like one, two, three in the morning and they'll wake me up out of a sound sleep. So I shut off my notifications for that, but I'll I'll try to check that more often. You know, uh, set Clayton Joseph, uh, send me what time you're available and I'll try to be available during that time because I would love to chat with you uh, on the phone. <clears throat> My girlfriend sent me some very interesting scripture today from her Bible about the fall of Jericho and how it's really starting to relate. And she isn't one to do that. Wow. And I think we were praying for her the other day, weren't we, True Norther? I, I, it could have been somebody else. Someone was asking us to pray for their girlfriend. Uh, it could have been someone else. I don't want to speak too soon. <clears throat> We were, yes, her and her kiddos. Okay, all right, all right. God bless her and her kids. We pray for breakthrough, continued breakthrough for True Norther and his girlfriend and her kids in Jesus' mighty name. 
Our grand, as a little girl, I'm so happy to hear your grandmother and mother were Bible-believing Christians. Wow, 70 years old, Miro. That's cool. It really is. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I appreciate it. Appreciate everybody that uh, hits the like. Hello, John Francis. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Any prayer? Any more prayer requests this morning? Anybody got anything going on? Are you getting attacked? Do you need a miracle? Do you need a breakthrough? Oh, I got something in my eye. This one's bad. Ah. There we go. Good gravy. That one hurt. <laughs> Hello, Marie H. Good to see you. All righty, Clayton Joseph. We find so many neat Christian antiques prints when we go antiquing. I love that stuff. I love older things. I love older things. Uh, this, ah, back in my eye again. Good gravy. This one's rough. All right. I think I'm good. Oh, I hate that. Now my eyes are going to be all messed up and swollen up. People are going to be like, you got pink eye. No, no. I just had, it was like an eyelash or something got in there. Yeah, I think it's gone. Praise be to Jesus, it's gone. Thank you, Lord. I hate that, man. I absolutely hate having stuff in my eyes. It really bugs me. It finds me, all right. Uh. Good morning, Susan Pound Roar. Good morning, Alex Hernandez. Good to see you guys. Oh, yeah. Ant antique stores and vintage stores are the best. I, I, My wife will tell you, I'd rather buy older things than newer things any day of the week. Any day of the week. Yep, any day of the week. Good morning, Uplifting Joe. I didn't see you until just now. We pray for Uplifting Joe for interpretation to the dreams that he's having, Lord. If they're of you, Jesus, show them that they're of you. If they're not, show them that they aren't. Uh, and if they are, give them the interpretation thereof, uh, just as you gave the interpretation interpretations to Daniel of dreams, Lord. I pray that in Jesus' mighty name. I get stuff in my eyes all the time. Blinking fast moves it towards your nose, and then you can get it out of the inner corner. It, it, it was heading out to the other side for some reason. Hello, Frankie. Good to see you. Hello, wear away kid. Uh, I don't understand uh, your uh, um, language, um, but God bless you, wear, 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 wear a kid. God bless you. I appreciate you. Opo magaganap na gna po ito maga capucci. And I think that's probably like, hello, how are you doing? I don't know. Maybe I can, maybe there's a translator. I don't know. No, I wish, I wish YouTube would translate stuff. That'd be really cool of them to do so, but they don't. They absolutely don't. Uh, what, what, uh, Vanessa, just so you know, War, War A Kid uh, has been a subscriber here for a while. Uh, they come and go, but I, I know who they are. I just uh, didn't know what uh, they were saying. Uh, and everyone I've missed, good morning. Hello, Harper Ann. Hello, Frankie. Good to see you. Glad to have all of you. I looked at that person's channel. Oh, really? Okay, hold on. I'm going to do something real quick. I want to do this real quick. Yeah. Yeah, we're not doing that. Nope. Vanessa, I apologize. You are an awesome moderator. You are an awesome, awesome moderator. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, no. No, you don't need to apologize at all. Yeah, you don't need to apologize at all. You were you 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 were doing exactly what what uh, you you uh, what you needed to. I didn't know. Yep, I didn't know. 
I'm glad that I know now, though. I'm glad that I know now, though. Yeah, I'm glad that I know now, though. Wow, that's messed up. Yeah, Vanessa's on the ball. I dropped the ball there, Vanessa. Shame on Josh. Have a look-see. <laughs> I'd honestly rather not see that stuff, to be honest with you, Vanessa. Uh, I appreciate you going to bat, though, for the channel. I really do. That means a lot. Uh, when the mods are doing their jobs correctly, this channel is safer and smoother. Josh, I love the mods you have here. Yeah, I have some great moderators. Clayton, Vanessa, uh, Sister Linda, who's absent right now, uh, Brother Global News Wars, Barb Trevert, all great moderators that are here all the time. Uh, I got a couple openings for moderators that I'm going to be choosing here and there when the Lord, Lord uh, highlights some people to me. So... Yeah, that's awesome, Vanessa. Thank you so much. What a blessing. You're a huge blessing to this channel, sister. Um, uh, it's all, it's all, it's afternoon here. Our brand, but good morning to you. Have a blessing. <laughs> yeah, Frankie, uh, where are you at, Frankie? If it's afternoon there, I'm curious. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've just, I've seen Warre Kid here before. And they were speaking English, you know, and I, I don't know, out of nowhere, things change, I guess. My, my, I might have the wrong person. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, UK, okay. UK okay. That's awesome. Hello, Lauren May. Good to see you. Anybody have any prayer requests at all this morning? <clears throat> any prayer requests at all? You got any demonic attacks in your life? Do you have an addiction you want to see broken in the name of Jesus? Do you need a miracle from heaven above? Do you need healing for a family member? Anybody have any prayer requests out there? Anything at all? And uh, after we deal with that, we can uh, uh, do some, um, what do you call it, uh, some Bible reading. So my wife at work was given a, a package uh, at work, and I have some snacks from Vietnam I'm actually really excited about. This one is spicy garlic peanuts, <laughs> tantan spicy garlic peanuts. They still have it in English, though. Dao Pong Toy Oot. Nagong Nagat Nagay and Thick Nagay. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's 100% vegan. And then I have uh, An Chabong. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. It looks scary to me. It's probably like seafood that's dehydrated or something. And then I have Vietnamese Mentos that are spicy. Huang Tri K. Yeah, pretty cool. We're going to have to give those a whirl here one of these times. <clears throat> On my way to Dennis. Well, Marie H., I hope that you have a great dentist appointment in Jesus' mighty name. Frankie says, not on your Nelly would I eat them. That's funny. For Jesus, I'm still fighting the good fight against cannabis. Okay, well, uh, so any prayer helps. Well, dear Jesus, Heavenly Father, did we just pray that you make cannabis bitter to waiting for Jesus? We just rebuke the effects of cannabis. We pray that it makes them sick and nauseous more than it does anything else. Uh, we pray that they see the need to, to quit that. I pray that you help them to see it as something negative in their mind and not something that's positive. It's robbing them of their finances. It's robbing them of their health. It's not healing anything. Lord Jesus, we just pray that you be with waiting for Jesus. We just break the yoke of cannabis. We break the yoke of drugs. We break the yoke of the spirit of pharmacia, the spirit of sorcery that's behind cannabis. We rebuke the, the God of cannabis. In Jesus' mighty name, that Maitreya. Uh, we rebuke Hinduism and everything, everything that comes with that cannabis stuff. All that uh, Flower of life, new age, hippie stuff. I rebuke that all in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray for life. And I pray for victory over the situation. I pray that the, the yoke of this uh, addiction is broken in Jesus' mighty name. 
Um, you know, we ask you, Lord, to um, uh, uh, be with uh, uh, waiting for Jesus and just encourage them and, and strengthen them to be able to stand against uh, this attack of the enemy in their life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen and amen. Frankie, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't, I didn't offer anything to you. That doesn't make sense to me. Heading to the eye doctor. I shall be back, though. Have you ever heard of a world market, Josh? They have food from all over the world. I think that's something kind of like that. Uh, there was like some little box that that uh, one of my wife's coworkers gave to her that she has like mailed to her every month. And it has foods from different parts of, of the world. Uh, so, Poochie Mama, can you tell me what, what this, I mean, I know it's spicy garlic peanuts, but do you recognize this at all? Poochie Mama, and then, uh, or this, I don't, I don't, uh, can you tell me what this is? I don't know what this is. It's not in English at all. And then, I, I know what these are, and I'm excited to try these. They're spicy Mentos. I'm really excited about that. It looks like apple cinnamon is one. Cayenne and like a cayenne and pineapple. And then a and then a ginger uh type of one there. I don't know. I, I, I'm interested to try them out. <clears throat> Uplifting Joe says, waiting for Jesus. I bowed that same battle. So did I. Also pray to Jesus that he will remove the craving and the and the want for it to you. Amen. Yeah, it's something that you got to see as negative. It's something that you got to see as negative. It will really help you get out of that uh, marijuana mindset. It's it's see it as demonic. It's see it for what it is. It is absolutely from the pits of hell. And, and I don't care what people say, get mad at me, but it is the devil's lettuce. You know, I absolutely love that saying because that's exactly what it is. It's the devil's lettuce. It's not a joke. It really is. It opens up the third eye. It's, 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 you know, they're even saying now, and I've heard police say this, that it's borderline hallucinogenic now. And, and you can take enough of it and like concentrates and things like that to where you're going to hallucinate. I know, I know people that have done edibles and passed out for days. You know, this stuff isn't good. Like there's people, like they say it's good for you and that it's healing and all that stuff. What a bunch of hogwash lies. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, amen. We pray for Barb Frebert, uh, that she has a great eye doctor appointment, Lord, and that whatever is going on, Jesus, that you just meet her where she's at and you help her uh, uh, and, and, and just encourage her uh, and, and help her through this eye doctor appointment. Let it go well. In Jesus' name I pray. We pray for healing for Barb Frebert. Amen and amen. Oh, I wasn't offering them to you, Frankie. I only have, I only have enough for me. <laughs> okay, that makes sense now. That makes sense. I like trying strange things. I really do. I've ate octopus before, uh, never again, but I've had a chunk of octopus tentacle before. Um, I spit it out, but I, I chewed it, and uh, that wasn't too cool. Uh, Barb Forever says, I may go tomorrow with my daughter, and I will check out their hot sauces, Josh. Where where are you going for hot sauces, Barb Forever? Did God or the devil create marijuana? Oh, man, you're one of those people. All right. Adios. I'm not going to sit there and argue with people. I'm not. I'm not. God created all things, but there are mushrooms out there that will kill you if you eat them. Water hemlock, you go and you eat that or you go smoke that and you will die. You know, angels trumpet, uh, you'll hallucinate while you're dying. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean you should do it. You know, there's a purpose for everything, but it's not to smoke it or eat it. I'm telling you, I don't care what you think. I love how people will be real snarky and ask those questions that set you up for like an argument, you know, they'll say something real like, hmm, real smug and like, you know, I, I, I absolutely love those people, you know, absolutely love them. Uh, no, around here, we don't promote marijuana in the least bit. We don't want anything to do with marijuana. Um, we don't, it's pharmacia, it's sorcery. It says by sorcery, we're all nations deceived. 
Uh, sorcery is translated into the Greek as pharmakia. It's where you get the word pharmaceuticals from, and it's where we derive the word drugs from, from pharma pharmakia. It is. Pharmaceuticals are considered drugs. And I'm not talking about the life-saving ones. I'm talking about the ones that alter the state of mind. So uh, anyways, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, people have a very negative experience now. Uh, you know, it, it really is. So amen. Shifting perspective on it helped me quit. Yep. Amen, Lauren May. That's what I'm talking about. You got to. I like the way you put that. You have to shift your perspective about marijuana if you want to see freedom from it. Amen, Sister Lauren. Amen. Way to go, sister. Plus, you never really know what might be added to it. I'm going to tell you a story. This is a true story, okay? This is an absolutely true story. Um, I want to tell you this. I'm, not, I'm I'm behind in the live chat because I'm trying to keep up with things. So everybody go slow for a second. Um, anyways, so when I used to smoke weed, okay, there was times where, you know, you wouldn't clean your pipe out for a while. You get kind of lazy on marijuana, you know what I mean? And, and I didn't clean my pipe out for a while. And when I finally blew the ash out of it, there was blue ash at the bottom of my pipe more than once more than once and that was from dispensary that was from a dispensary so i want people to know that you know you're getting a lot more than what you think you're getting and you're addicted to it because there's a lot more in it than what you think double double dog says i watched your recent video that was special with pastor brett it was nice to hear part of your testimony i started following you because of it well double dog that really touches my heart you know there wasn't a lot of reaction to that video. A lot of people have seen it, but there wasn't a lot of reaction to that video. And uh, your comment really stands out to me. It's a huge encouragement. I'm going to be putting little clips of Pastor Brett and Pastor Scott, uh, both men that started these churches. I know I knew personally. Uh, you know, I I, knew, I know their pastor as well. Uh, you know, and, and, and they're very godly men. And uh, I really hope and pray that people went over to Church Alive. Uh, found the links at the bottom of that video in the description box and went over there and subscribed to them because every uh, if I'm awake, if I'm awake on Sunday morning or if I'm not live, uh, you know, I'm going to be over there at Church Alive. The Lord has put that on my heart to start watching uh, their sermons over there. And and because I don't I don't go to church anywhere. You know, I just do end times talk. This is this is this gathering together of believers is my church. And I noticed on their channel, there's not one comment. Well, you know what? Josh is going to go over there and he's going to comment. That's where I'm going to be at. That's where you'll find me at is over on their videos. Uh, that's where I'll be at uh, because I know these men and I trust them. I know these men and I trust them 100%. You know, uh, so many teenagers at my son's high school. Uh, Susan, mine, what are you talking about? Um, okay, yeah, I don't know. I, Barb Frever, just try, or Susan, mine, just help me understand what you're talking about, sister. Uh, Sarah says, I'm sorry, brother. I'm still here getting distracted by some things on my end. No problem, Sarah. No problem. You don't, people don't ever have to say they're sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. They, they do. Yep. I agree with you, Susan. Mine. Okay. Now I know what you mean. Hello, Swedish Lutheran. I have mental trauma issues. It really sucks. But we rebuke the devil and everything he's tried to do to bring Swedish Lutheran uh, uh, into a traumatic state. I rebuke the the, the problems and, and the and the and the heartbreak and everything that's happened to uh, 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 Swedish Lutheran uh, in their life that have have brought them to this this area in their life. Uh, I just rebuke what the devil has tried to do. I just rebuke what Satan has tried to, to uh, 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 the traps that Satan has tried to set uh, in their life that, that, that are uh, uh, mental traps and, and physical traps. Lord Jesus, we pray that you will remove these, Lord, and that you will make Swedish Lutheran's path straight, Lord, and that you will bring uh, your truth and your life and your mercy and your grace and your joy and your peace into Swedish Lutheran's mind and life and physical body. And, and I pray that that will radiate from Swedish Lutheran in Jesus mighty name I pray in Jesus mighty name I pray uh hello faith fam uh good to see you um Clayton Joseph for anyone that like hot sauce there's a specific food at Bahia State that is called Arcaje if you ask the hot version you need to be ready for a real hot spicy food <laughs> all right Clayton Joseph thank you appreciate that I can't handle anything that affects my thought process. I would rather suffer the pain if I have to choose. I agree, Harper, and I'm with you there. I don't like the feeling of being high. 
Yep, I agree, Alex Hernandez. I see, uh, Clayton Joseph sees uh, marijuana as a plant that God created, but unfortunately, men use it to evil intents. I agree. Uh, doesn't just because God created poisonous mushrooms doesn't mean you go and you eat them. You know, you'll die. God created water hemlock. You you smoke or eat that, you will surely die. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, doesn't mean that we should be doing it just because it exists. You know. Um, good. Hello, Tammy. Good to see you, sister. Good morning, Fred Deo. Good to see you. Hello by Grace Alone. Good to see you. Uh, thank you for loving the video with my brother Brett. It, it means so much. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up right now. Um, I do not like the way narcotics makes me feel or alcohol. Yeah, I can't stand uh, the way. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I I love I like drugs a little too much, and so that's why I have to stay away from it. It's one of those things. But alcohol, I can't stand. I don't like the way I feel on that. And honestly, as I've uh, come. Uh, into a sober mindset, uh, it just I don't desire those things that are of the world anymore. Um, you know, uh, Vanessa, may I ask what SEAL Team Six had said? If you could, if you could give me a heads up on what SEAL Team Six said, uh, Vanessa, because I'm going to decide whether to block them permanently or not. Because if Vanessa's if if Vanessa's deleting your comment, you're doing something wrong. And I didn't catch it because I wasn't at the bottom. Uh, you're so welcome, Swedish Lutheran, and you are loved here. Uh, you got a family here. Oh, you're one of those people. All right. It's funny to you, huh? It's funny to you. Laugh out loud. Laugh out loud. Got a keyboard warrior. SEAL Team 6. Keyboard warrior. Keyboard warrior. Adios, amigo. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sorry, when people are... Uh, oh, I see. Okay, that... that Okay, yeah. But anyways, still, uh, people like to say that. But, uh, you know, people... Look at it this way. I'm going to say this, okay? People with the palsy in the Bible, what did Jesus do? We read it yesterday. What did Jesus do for the man that had the palsy? What did he say to the man? He said, your sins are forgiven. Right, your sins are forgiven. So, what what brings sickness into your life then? Sin. Okay. So, if epilepsy is something that can be from maybe a generational curse, or you know, from something that you've done in the past that's caught up to you, you know, I'm not saying that all all cases are that because sometimes it's generational. I know people with schizophrenia; it's straight up demonic. They're hearing voices, things like that. All right. And so, when people say that weed helps. Uh, uh, the devil can't cast out the devil. We read that yesterday too, you know, in the Bible. And so, you know, um, weed doesn't help nothing, you know, argue all you want. Uh, but when you, when you do a laugh out loud, you're being snarky, you're being smug and, and, and you can get on with it and kick rocks. Yeah. I, I have no, I have no tolerance for smug people. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you, Marie H. I appreciate that. Yep, and, and and that's what I feel. You know, if you if you feel differently, then that's up to you. But but this kind of stuff, um, you know, can 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 cause sickness in your life. The power of life and death is in the tongue. The Bible tells us. The Bible's very specific about all these things. But people pass it over, and they think that they just have some issue that's just arisen out of nowhere. You know what I mean? And and it's not, that's not the case. That's not the case. It could be it could be literally things from from your parents' past or your grandparents' past. It says that God will revisit to the third and fourth generations, you know, and deal with people who uh, hate God. You know what I mean? Who curse God? So, uh, just a side note: we received an email about a moratorium advisory about the solar eclipse in the U.S. Clayton Joseph, yes, please enlighten us as to what's going on, brother, or if you just want to message it to me, uh, if it's longer, go ahead. Um, uh, thank you, Marie H. Uh, I got, it's got the three nails that make up the cross. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Pretty excited about it. Vanessa says she completely believes that her sin caused the cancer and that God used it to get her attention and pull her stubborn, uh, pull her stubborn self out of it. And I'll be honest with you, Vanessa, I really, really respect your stance on that. And I'm going to, and I'm going to say this with you, sister. Uh, I don't have a lot of teeth left. Okay. Uh, and, and I've had a lot of infections with my teeth. Okay. And here's the thing. 
when I was living in sin, I kept getting infections, kept getting abscessed teeth, kept having issues. You know what I mean? But when I finally started living for God and started doing what God was asking me to do, it all stopped. You know what I mean? And I didn't have a problem after that. God's kept me alive when I shouldn't be. You know what I mean? And so I will come and tell you the same thing that Vanessa just told you and say that my sin caused my sickness 100%. Everything that's happened in my life, it was because of the bad choices I was making. And you don't always hear the backstory that people aren't willing to tell you. Um, so I, I believe epilepsy can definitely come from the sins of your grandparents, the sins of your parents coming down uh, as a generational curse. Schizophrenia, same thing. I'll tell you, my wife's uncle, schizophrenic as schizophrenic can be, you know, and, and, and of course his medication stops it from happening because, you know, I, I mean, you know, we've seen him when he's off of it, but, you know, until he has a, a spiritual breakthrough and he's healed of it by the Lord, He's going to constantly have to keep duct taping it and marijuana duct tapes your epilepsy. You know, people will always have an excuse to do drugs. Oh, it's healing, man. I hear those hippies, man. I remember I used to tattoo. I used to be a tattoo artist for about four years, but it was going to end my marriage if I didn't uh, quit, quit tattooing. So I did. I quit tattooing. And uh, but one of the people that I tattooed uh, uh, said to me in private, they said, and I'm, gonna, I'm telling you here. Uh, uh, said to me in private, said, I can pay you cash or I can pay you in medicine. I can pay you in medicine is what she said. And she's one of them hippies from out in California that came out here to get tattooed by me because uh, I'm a decent artist. I can do tattoos decent. Uh, anyways, so, so, or I was, I was, I'm not anymore. But anyways, she, she called it medicine. And I'm like, even then I was like, it ain't medicine. It's dope, man. It's dope. <laughs> you know, like get it right. Um, uh, uplifting Joe. No, I didn't. I don't really pay attention to much of that stuff. Um, Aaron Wolf says, I agree. I was a marijuana smoker for many years, but I quit this year. And so far I haven't smoked it at all in 2024. And I don't want to. Yeah. Aaron Wolf, uh, you know, the more you get away from it and you stay away from people that do it, dude, it just leaves you, man. It God just, he does a, a, a complete turnaround. Thank you, Clayton Joseph, for locating that message. Uh, thank you, by grace alone. I appreciate that. Uh, Alex Hernandez says, "We." I'll be honest with you, it's not withdrawal. Weed itself is leading to major psychosis and mental disturbances. It's causing schizophrenia now in people. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By their sorceries were all nations deceived. Their pharmakia in the Greek. I mean, I don't think marijuana is something we should do no matter what, but God knows each and every person's individual situation. Uh, but I can't have those kind of comments in, in my live chat. I'm sorry. I love you, Tammy, 100%. You know, and I don't think badly of your husband. I believe he's in heaven, 100%. He knew Jesus. Jesus forgives sin. Uh, but it's it's one of those things where, you know, I don't think we should be doing drugs. I just don't. I just don't. And I have to take a hard stance on that coming from someone who spent, you know, well, oh, I mean, I, I smoked weed for well over 20 years. We'll put it to you that way. And I'm 37. That tells you I started pretty young. All right. Because I've been off it for quite some time. Uh, and, I, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And even if the worst was to happen to me, I will not go back to it. I will not be a dog going back to my own vomit. I can't do it. And, and, and I, I'm not trying to hurt anybody or anything like that. But that's how I feel about it. Uh, Alex Hernandez says, yep, my sicknesses have exposed my sin and my repentance. Amen, Alex. That's what I'm saying. We got confirmation from people. Yeah, that's very good, Swedish Lutheran, that you've got, started going to counseling. That's good. Yep, step by step, my friend. Hello, Brittany Ann Thompson. Didn't see it till just now. Uh, I fasted and prayed to undo anything that my family and past generations had done against God. Yeah, my dad was a real piece of work, and so was my grandfather. And so I've had to rebuke generational curses. Yep. Clayton Joseph says, there is an email regarding a, a maintenance moratorium that was placed by the FAA regarding the solar eclipse. I'm not sure if I can copy and paste here. Uh, hey, uh, Clayton, just send it in Facebook Messenger. 
I just like something like that in Facebook Messenger. And if it's if it's it's if it's going on, if there's something going on, I'll I'll bring it up. We'll do a news live or something like that. I have no problem. You know, there's a lot going on that I can mention in the news, but I'd rather be in prayer. So yeah, just go ahead and send that to uh, Facebook Messenger, my brother. Uh, that would that would help me out a, a ton. But I'm I'm curious to know what's going on, Clayton. But I'll I'll get the news out to people. You know I will. You send me news, and if it's if it's uh, important, I'll drive it right to the bone. Uh, yeah, I still feel sort of crazy, and I'm hoping God will heal my mind from the weed damage as time goes by. I pray in Jesus' name over Aaron Wolf, Lord Jesus, that you will open his mind back to the way that it once was, and that all the things and receptors that have been abused for so long, and all the uh, effects of marijuana that has happened as mine for so long, will be broken right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray that Satan, you will loose. Aaron Wolf's mind that you will get your hands off of him and that you will, uh, uh, Holy Spirit, that you will come and that you will just replace all of that and you will just come around him like a whirlwind and let him feel your love and your peace and your joy and your mercy and your grace and, and your happiness, Lord. Uh, you are all those good things, Lord. And I just pray those things over Aaron Wolf's mind. I pray that all the areas of his mind that haven't been functioning properly will begin to function properly in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for healing in his mind. I pray for healing in uh, 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 the uh, Swedish Lutheran's mind as well in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for every single person here that has been a victim of drugs. And you're a victim. You're a victim. All right. You were a victim. All right. And if you weren't, you wouldn't be doing drugs. And I'm going to tell you right now, everybody that's been a victim of drugs. OK, I pray that your mind is loose from the enemy right now in Jesus mighty name and that you find peace, that you find peace in our heavenly father and his son and the, and, and the son's sacrifice. I'll tell you right now. And you lay all those things at the foot of the cross. All right. You lay all those things at the foot of the cross of Jesus and that Jesus will make you whole once again. That will, he will make your mind whole as uh, uh, in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Uh, Clayton Joseph says, sorry, I'm trying to understand it too. I'll send to Josh by Facebook letter. Thank you, Clayton Joseph. I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you, brother. Amen, Alex Hernandez. I agree. It's bondage, 100%. There's nothing good that comes from weed. Never has. I My wife's uncle died from cancer, and he was thinking that weed was going to heal him, and it didn't. He ended up dying from cancer. You know, and it, and it bums me out when people say, oh, you need it for this and you need it for that. I've had family die from cancer and they were smoking weed thinking it helped them. It didn't help them. It didn't get them off the deathbed. That's for sure. You know, and that's the truth. And I'm saying that about my own family. I loved my wife's Uncle Ron. I loved him 100%. What, a, what an awesome guy he was. But I'll tell you right now, it won't save you. It don't help you. I don't care what anybody says. If you think weed is helping you, you're deceived in thinking so. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Amen. Amen, Susan. I started smoking and drinking at the age of 17. Only by the grace, mercy, and power of Christ have I been able to quit. Amen, Lord. May. Amen. I'm so glad to see that God is, is breaking yokes off of people that Satan has tried to put around their necks. You know, I can tell I offended some people. Sorry, but, you know, I'm not going to lie to people. You know, it, it, I upset the few to teach the many the truth. And that's the truth. There are people that are so stubborn in their sin. There are people that are so stubborn and think that this stuff is good for them. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to lie to you and say that it is. And this is coming from someone who did marijuana. This I've done, I've done every drug under the sun besides heroin. I'm telling you the truth. And I'm telling you right now, none of it is good. Not a thing. Not a one. I don't care what you say. That's what I'm saying, Faith Fam. I'll be honest with you. I like your comment. And how many times, can you? Can anybody confirm how many times I have said that drugs are the counterfeit for the presence of the Holy Spirit? When you get it, if you want to get high, I'll tell you right now, you want to get high, you want to feel a high like no other, tap into the presence of God. Start worshiping Jesus until the goosebumps cover your body. And I mean, there's a euphoria that comes with the presence of God. Like you would not believe, you would not believe. You, you think you think weed gets you stoned? Man, I'm telling you right now, when the presence of God hits you like a sack of bricks, you won't know what dimension you're in. Because I'm telling you right now, he chains, changes and he shifts time even when he comes into your home, when he comes into the room that you're praising him in. I'm telling you, you want to hear truth? That's the truth. Satan uses drugs. 
to keep people from, and numb them to the presence of the Holy Spirit. How can you tap into the presence of the Holy Spirit when you're tapping into the presence of pharmakia, of sorcery, of witchcraft, and you're trying to open your pineal gland, your third eye, all right? You, you, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. You're biting from that forbidden fruit every time you do, all right? And people are deceived into thinking that it helps them. What it does is, is we get you stoned, and it distracts you from your issues. It doesn't solve them. It distracts you. You forget your problems. You literally is. And why are you forgetting? Because it's doing damage to your mind. 100%. 100%. Oh, Susan, mine, that's disrespectful. I'll be honest with you. That's what I do, man. I'll tell you right now. I, I would not be happy about that, uh, Susan, mine. I, I, I rebuke that in Jesus' mighty name. I absolutely rebuke that disrespectful, disobedient mindset that these teens have nowadays, that these youngsters have nowadays, I rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. How dare, how dare that young man blow that smoke in your face? That is so disrespectful, Susan, that he's done that. And God sees it, and he best be careful. He best be careful. That really upsets me. I don't want to say anything more because I'm going to say something I don't mean. That really upsets me that he did that to you. And I am so sorry, Susan. I am so sorry. I'd, I'd look right at him. Get thee behind me, Satan. I'm telling you right now. Brittany Ann says, I smoked pot from the time I was 14 until I was 37. I cried out to Jesus to take my desire for it away. I mean, I cried out to him and said, in spite of myself, no matter what it takes, do whatever it takes to. Wow, Brittany Ann. What a, what a testimony. What a testimony. We overcome the power of the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And here we are, standing our ground against the wiles of the devil, dodging them fiery darts. You ain't catching us. Lauren May says, that's so true. As I've gotten sober, I literally feel like new dimensions of life have been revealed to me as I walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the truth, sister. Absolutely, I feel high after the prayer and praise we do here on this channel. Oh, yeah, there's a lightheartedness to it. There really is. Uh, Tammy. Amen, Tammy. Amen. Amen. And God bless your husband. God bless your husband. Uh, Swedish Lutheran uh, does say that marijuana is good to produce strong textile cloth, not smoking it. Uh, I do know that the uh, Constitution was written on hemp. Hemp is a lot different than marijuana. Hemp is something that doesn't have the the the, the drug content to it, but they've they've cultivated hemp for so long and turned it into something that's more potent. Uh, they have even the hemp even back even back in the day, the hemp that they were growing was it wouldn't get you high, and, and I don't know why people would smoke it. All right. But but in fact, that as it came into the, the, the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s, they started to cultivate it. And when man gets their hand on something, you know, it gets stronger and stronger because they're trying to bring out those genetics that do that. And, and of course, it's going to turn it high. And now it's so genetically modified uh, and, and the high is so strong, you don't even know what reality you're in. And, and it lasts for about 15 minutes and you find yourself taking another hit that that quick, you know. We sure are prepping Rhonda Smorowski. We sure are. Uh, Vanessa says, it upsets me also. I'm adding you and your son to my prayer list. I pray God's saving, life-changing conviction is so heavy upon your son and his call to repentance and his timing. Amen. Amen, Vanessa. Amen. Yeah, I want to get off the drug talk. Enough drug talk. No more. No more drug talk. We aren't going to glorify this anymore. Unless you have something positive to say about being sober. All right? No more drug talk. None. None. I'm going to start deleting comments. I'm not going to block people, but I will start deleting comments. I'm done with it. Um... Oh, Susan, I'll tell you right now. You have me come over there. I'll, I'll tell them a thing or two. And I'm not talking... You know, physically, I'm talking like I'll share some stuff with them about that. I will. Send me your phone number, Susan, mine, and put me on speakerphone. I'll say what you can't, sister. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't. I don't mean it by that. I don't mean it like that. But give me your phone number. I'll call you private call, 
and I'll talk to your son. I will. I have no problem doing that. Um, canned goods, water, and a manual can opener doing what I am able and praising God in the process. Amen, Harper Ann. Rhonda says, I've been sober from alcohol over 25 years. Praise Jesus. Coming to the live with the Bible now. Amen. Yeah, we're getting there, Alex. I'm about ready to start reading because I want to get away from all this. Uh, drug talk. I don't like the drug talk unless it's about being sober and, and uh, all that. That's different. Pamela says, once I quit chasing the drugs and got closer to Jesus, the love, peace, and happiness is abundant. Amen. Amen. It sure is. It surely is. Uh, Vanessa, are you able to still be around for a while? Because I want to read the Bible and I'm going to need moderators to have my back. How many moderators uh, do I have in the chat right now? I'm just curious. We're going to be reading out of Mark 11 uh, uh, as we start. So if you guys want to flip to Mark chapter 11. Okay. Uh, Vanessa's watching the live chat, and uh, we're going to just start reading. Hey, how about that? <clears throat> uh, Harper Ann, uh, I'll, you can go to eBay, you go to Amazon, uh, Thrift Books. I think Thrift Books is another one. Uh, just look up 1611 King James Version or 1611 Authorized King James Version. Type it into Google and, and they will come up. They will come up. I'll show you. This is the one that I have right here. And it's by Hendrickson Bibles. Hendrickson Bibles is the one I use. It's the 400th anniversary edition. Hendrickson Bibles, 1611 uh, King James Version right there. I'm here for a half an hour until my lunch break kicks in. All right. All right. We're going to read the word. And, and we're starting in chapter 11 uh, in the book of Mark. If you want to meet up with us on, on that real quick, if you want to read along. Um, I, the reason I started in Mark is because I've read Matthew so many times. And people, you know, they'll start the New Testament, but they won't finish it out. And I say that we're just going to go through the New Testament bit by bit. Each day, we're going to go through the New Testament. Um, what's the difference in my King James, you know, um, how do I put this? I'm trying to think here. Give me a second. Um, it's just not a compl it's a complicated answer is what it is. It's a complicated answer. Uh, but putting it simply, um, it's, it's the one version that I trust. You know what I mean? It's the, it's the one I choose to read. Uh, it's the first uh, version that King James did and, and the 400 scholars that put it together, um, you know, and um, yeah, it's just, it's something that I've all, I'm not, a, uh, uh, I don't have a master's degree in theology or anything like that, but I know people that do. Uh, I know people that have been in it a really long time. And it's one of those things um, you know, that, uh, I, I'm just going to trust my brothers and, 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 and the people that I know in Christ that say, this is, this is that core version that, that you want to have, uh, and read from, uh, it goes way back a lot of, a lot of schools of, of theology and, and, and thought and, and biblical scholars, uh, teach that it's not some new, um, it's not some new thing. It's not some new thing. So, uh, anyways, um, I'm not going to get into the long answer of that. I just, I want to move on to reading the scripture is what I want to do. Uh, and you can read along. And, and uh, one thing I will say is, is that they've changed a lot of the stuff after it. Now, King James Version uh, is fine. 1611 KJV is fine. Uh, but, but getting into like new King James Version, they start to change words a little bit. And then once you get past that, I mean, it's, it's an all out free for all on the word of God, in my opinion. And they change a lot of stuff. So I stick with the 1611 version because I want to be as close as I can uh, to the original English text that we have. People say, no, there's the Geneva Bible. In fact, uh, I believe that was getting pretty far away from what God intended. Uh, anyways, and when they came nigh, uh, we're reading Mark, Mark chapter 11. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethpage and unto Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, wherein, 
whereon never man sat. So no man's ever sat on that on, on that on that uh, horse. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loosed him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosing the colt? And they said unto him, Even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. So it was a donkey. I'm sorry. It wasn't a horse. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches of the trees and strawed them in the way. So they were literally throwing palm branches down on the ground uh, uh, as Jesus was passing on, on this donkey. And they, and in the, in the King James Version, it says it was a cult. Can any, now, here's the thing. I am going to ask people here because I'm, I'm kind of dumb when it comes to this stuff. Uh, what is the definition of a cult? Because I'm not going to go to Google right now and check it. But is a cult a donkey or is it a horse? Because I've always thought a colt is a horse, you know. That's that's just I, I could be wrong, but you know, we we do know from what they've told us in in you know in churches and stuff that it was a donkey. It could be a donkey. Um, anyways, and they that went before and they that followed cried saying, "Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh." Hold on, turn on the page. That cometh in the name of the Lord. Colt is a horse, a baby horse. Wow. That's interesting. So we've always been told it's a donkey, but it's a it's a it's a horse. Wow, that that blows my mind. That blows my mind away. It really does. A colt is a young male donkey, according to Google. Okay, all right, there. That's that's a good that's a good one. A colt is a young male donkey. Okay, the name of the Lord, blessed be the and and that's super humble too. It's super, it's super humble. Uh, both a horse and a donkey. It can be either. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. They're from the same family. They really are. Uh, even zebras, they're from the same family. Uh, the name of the Lord, blessed be the kingdom of our father, uh, David, that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all the things, and now the eventide was come, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. So he literally cursed the tree. All right, And his disciples heard it, and they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. That's something that always bugs me, is when you go into a church and they got a bookstore in the church or a coffee shop in the church. How, how different is that than, than people, you know what I mean, doing that? And it says right here, And he overthrew the temples of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, It is not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. So he's asking a question. But ye have made it into a den of thieves. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him. So so let's look at this here. Let's break this down. So, so Jesus overturns all these temples, says it's a den of thieves. You know, you're selling stuff in my father's house. Don't be doing that. And and because of that, because because the scribes and the Pharisees are making that money off of the situation, that's well, when you mess with the money, oh boy, all right, you mess with the money. It says that's when they sought to destroy him. For they feared him because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. Because he's speaking truth. He's speaking truth. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So that tree that Jesus cursed on the way in, when they came past it, it had died in that time. Wow, that's awesome. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed uh, is withered away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith, have faith in God. For verily, uh, here's a teaching moment. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and thou shalt not doubt in his heart, uh, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now I'm going to say something here, and then here's another teaching moment here. All right? Uh, using 
God's name in vain isn't just your curse words, okay? It's not just your curse words. It's not just saying things in disgust using God's name, you know, cursing with God's name. It's not. It's when you ask God for a favor. It's when you ask God for a miracle. It's when you ask God for finances that you need. It's when you ask God for something and you don't think he's going to do it. And you don't think it's possible. You know, it would be better for you to not even, even have asked at all than to ask and curse God in that way, or curse Jesus in that way. And it says it right here. I'm going to read it again. We're going to go back over this. I want you to I want you to absorb this. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things there that soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them. That's something that I do. And God always brings it. He always does. Every single time. I literally, I, I, I'm going to say this, okay. I, I, I uh, had enough wood to border in a couple of rows of my garden. I asked God, I said, God, I, and, I, and I asked specifically, I said, Lord, would you provide the support for me to border in the rest of my garden so that way the grass isn't growing in on the rows and it makes it more difficult to take care of later on. Work smarter, not harder. Can I get an amen on that for us gardeners? Y'all know how it is. Y'all know how it is keeping them, them garden rows clean so the plants can, you know, get all the nutrients that they need. And here's the thing. I asked God and he provided it. Man, just immediately, same day, same day. When you believe in your heart that God is capable and able, he'll show up every time. He does. He's, he, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll always come to bat for you. He'll always help you out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive and you have uh, against any. So if you're, at, if you're asking God to forgive you and you have anything against anybody else, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you for your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. So this is going to be a rough one here. This is going to be a rough one. So uh, those people that have been hurt as a child, those people who had evil things happen to them, uh, those people who were raped, all right? You're talking to one of them. You're talking to one of them, all right? I had a woman rape me when I was a child. I'm going to say it, okay? My babysitter, all right? You want to know what? I forgive her 100%. She used to beat the dickens out of me. She made me eat my own vomit, okay? And I forgive her. You know what, Jojo, you are forgiven in Jesus' mighty name. Because I want this to be an example to everybody watching this right now. That this woman is forgiven, and I pray that she has a seat in heaven with the Lord. And that she gives her life to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came to forgive the sinner. All right? He came to forgive. And we should be forgiving too. All right? And you got to set an example when you're trying to lead people in the right direction. And I want to let everybody, everybody know that everything that has ever hurt you in your life, that husband that hurt you, or that wife that cheated on you, or that husband that cheated on you, or that uh, uh, bad thing that happened here or at work, or that co-worker that spoke bad against you, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you will forgive everybody. And that you'll make a list and you'll go through it and you will release yourself from those situations by giving out your forgiveness and give it freely. And God is going to see that. All right. God is going to see that in what you have going on in your life. And he's going to forgive you for the things that you've done because we've all done wrong. We all live in a fallen creation. All right. And it says, and they come again into Jerusalem. And as he was walking in the temple, they came to him or there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders and say unto him, <coughs> by what authority doeth thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question and answer me. And I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John was it from heaven or of men. Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say, well, then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, we cannot tell. All right. And Jesus answering saith unto them, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Man, Jesus was bad to the bone. And I say that in a good way. That's one of my phrases. OK, I say, you know, that something. Oh, that's bad to the bone. Jesus was an outlaw. I love it, man. I love you, Jesus. You are so good. You broke 
religious strongholds everywhere you went, Lord. There is nothing that makes me happier to see than to see that religious mindset be put in its place. I want to read it again. I want to read it again. We're going to read that again. All right. Uh, and they came, uh, uh, they came again to Jerusalem, and he was walking in the temple. There come to him the chief priests and scribes and elders, and said unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? You know, the the, the, the forgiveness and things like that. You know what I mean? That he was just talking about. By what authority doest thou these things? And and who gave thee, gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves. So they, they got in a circle and they're like, oh, what do you say? You know, and, and they reasoned with themselves saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say, well, then did you not believe him? <laughs> so they knew what their answer was. But if we shall say of men and, and the scribes and the Pharisees feared the people, you know, they didn't want to get stoned or nothing like that because they believed John the Baptist was a prophet. All right. And he says, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto him, we cannot tell. And so Jesus re rebuts back and says, neither, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. So if you can't tell me, I don't owe you nothing. Uh, you know, it's OK, Arletta. You know, I, I hold no uh, 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 harboring of anger towards that woman whatsoever. Even the next daycare I went into, they abused me too. They were violent towards me too. So, and they're forgiven as well. All right. All the people who picked on me through my childhood, everybody who hurt me, my dad who hurt me. All right. Everybody who hurt me. I'll tell you what, I dealt with a lot of abuse all throughout my life and I forgive each and every single one of them. I want to make that plain and clear plain and clear right now, because I want to set an example. I want you all to see you got, and I'll tell you what, you guys have f f parents who are abusive. You guys have uh, family members who are abusive. Forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. I'm telling you, and you will be set free. All right. I'm telling you, and the Lord can forgive you of the things that you've done. All right. All right. Now we're in chapter 12. All right. Um, and he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fat. So even while the grape is still on the vine, right here in my Bible, it says it's wine. Okay, so don't give me that fermented talk. I don't want to hear it. I really don't. And built a tower and let it out to the husbandman and went into a far country. And at the season, he sent to the husbandman, husbandman a servant that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again, he sent unto them another servant. And at, at, and at him, they cast stones and wounded him in the head. So they busted his head open with a rock and sent him away shamefully handled. And again, he sent another and him they killed. So, wow, that's messed up. And many others beating some and killing some. Having yet, therefore, one son has well beloved. He sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said amongst themselves, This is the heir come. Let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. That's literally what the Jews did to Jesus. He sent a bunch of prophets, and then he sent his son. God did. And, and every single time they, 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 they beat the prophets, they killed the prophets, and they killed Jesus too. That's exactly what it was. But those husbandmen said amongst themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. Jesus knew what was coming. Jesus knew what was coming. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen and will give the vineyard unto others. And that's what happened. That's what happened. He gave the vineyard to the church. Do you get it? I hope you're getting it. I get it. All right. And have you not read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, the cornerstone, the head of it, the top. Jesus is the cornerstone, the top. All right. And I'm not talking what's on the back of the dollar bill. That's That pertains to Lucifer. Lucifer's always trying to take God's place. Lucifer's always trying to take, you know what I mean? He's always trying to undo what God does. I think it's funny people are leaving the live chat. I think that's interesting. They don't like hearing scripture. All right. And you have you not read the scripture, the stone which is the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them, and they left him and went their way. 
So he literally knew what the scribes and the Pharisees were plotting to do, that they were going to plan to destroy him. So he laid it to him. I mean, Jesus, man, wow. You know, that's uh, that's exciting if you ask me. That is exciting if you ask me. Like he was just right in the nose of the scribes and the Pharisees. <laughs> I love that, man. We serve an amazing God. And they said, they send unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. So now they're starting to conspire against him. Oh, man, that's a lot of people say conspiracy was invented by the CIA or conspiracy theory or whatever. All right. No, it was invented in the Bible. The scribes and the Pharisees were behind this conspiracy to kill Jesus. All right. Um, and, and they then they tried to catch him in his words. And when they're when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God and truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? You see, they're trying to make him stumble right there. Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing the hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, and he saith unto them, Whose is the image and, and so, superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. The problem is, is that people rend unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but they don't give to God's people. They don't give to ministries. And I'm not trying to get money here. It's a teaching moment. All right. People don't mind paying their taxes, but when it comes because they want to stay out, they want to stay out of jail. All right. Because Caesar will come get you. All right. But it, when it comes time to give in ministries and God's people, you know, giving it to God, you're not just giving to God's people. You're not just giving to God's ministries. You're giving to the Lord. He don't need your money. He wants your obedience. Obedience is greater than sacrifice, it says in the Old Testament. And they marveled at him. Then come unto him the Sadducees. Oh, there's the Sadducees. All right, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, if a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second, and, and they're talking children, okay. And the second took her and, and died, neither left he any seed. And the third likewise. All right, wow, it's a, it's a, it's a whoo. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. And the seven had her and left no seed, lest all of the woman, lest of all the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall be of them? For the seven had her to wife. All right. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err? All right. So he's telling them they're in error. All right. Because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. For when they shall rise from the dead, neither. They neither marry nor are given in marriage because you're married to Jesus. Now watch the numbers go down because there's people that think you're going to be married in heaven and you get to have sex in heaven and all that stuff. Well, yep, see, there it goes down. Here's the thing, all right? You're married to Christ when you get to that point. You are the bride of Christ. Is he going to allow you to go cheat on him? And I'm talking spiritually. I'm not talking physically, all right? Oh, yeah, look at the numbers go down. Adios, amigos. Oh, he said we can't have sex in heaven. No. Jesus is telling you right here. Jesus is telling you right here. All right. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to read it again. Uh, and Jesus answering said unto them, do ye not therefore error? Because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry. Jesus is telling you, call them a liar if you want, but I wouldn't want to be in your position. Neither do they marry, nor are they given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Okay, all right. And as touching the dead that they rise, have you not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, the flame and bush, saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. You therefore do greatly error. So he's telling you, you guys are, you guys are messed up. Get, up. get on out of here. And one of the scribes came and had, oh, they're so conniving. That, that, that snake tongue that they got. Oh, man, that silver tongue, man, that, that thing. I'll tell you what makes me upset. And one of the scribes came came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is here, O Israel, the Lord our God is, is, is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. 
This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Think about it. Think about it. Love you, brother Clayton. God bless you, brother. Thanks for hanging out with us. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all thine heart, uh, and with all the understanding, with all of the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And, and, and so here's the thing, you know. Yeah, I won't get into that. And when Jesus saw that an answer, and that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God, and no man after that durst ask him any question. And Jesus answered and said, While he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said, Be uh, the Holy Ghost. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself called him Lord, and whence he... And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them, uh, in his doctrine, beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogue. So have you ever noticed how there's churches where there's seats up on the altar and all the people that are a part of things get to sit up there, but, you know, everybody else sits back, you know, and then you got reserved seats in the front. I think that's funny. And I think that's what, what this is pertaining to, in my opinion. Um, and, and hold on one second for David himself said by the Holy ghost, blah, blah, blah. All right. For David himself said by the Holy ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies, thy footstool. David therefore himself called him Lord. And whence he is, and whence he then his son and the, and the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them in his doctrine, beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing. So they love to look good. All right. They love to wear their fancy clothes. All right. This is a $9 shirt, by the way. And love salutations in the marketplace, uh, in the chief seats, in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts. So they want to sit in the better places. They want the better seats. All right. They want to be first in line which devour widows' uh, houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These sh And that's why we pray short here. We don't go on and on and on and on and on because we believe what we're praying here at End Times Talk. These shall receive greater damnation. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld, beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast in to the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance. But she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Now I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm not going to say anything bad about anybody that's uh, 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 supported this ministry, but I want to make a point. There's times where people have given a good amount. All right. And there's other people that have given a little amount. And I'm telling you right now, there's times where I shed tears over those little amounts. All right. They're where they touch me. They come in so handy sometimes for this ministry, for the little things that need to be taken care of around here. You know, the bigger stuff goes for bills and things like that. I, I, I I'll buy my wife's clothes that she needs. She goes through them rather quickly. She works hard. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. We can't afford the extra things around here. All right. Every every month or so, every two months or so, we end up having a bill that we are struggling paying. God provides. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and something that me and my wife both notices is the little things. You know, the little things, the $10 amounts, the $15 amounts. It is such an encouragement just to see God's people give it, even though they might not have a lot, of, a lot to give, all right, being faithful in that, paying at least something. Not saying that this ministry needs it. Send your money somewhere else. It doesn't have to be end times talk. But what I'm saying is, is that being in obedience like that, like, look at this widow. All right, I'll show you. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Give me a second here. And I got to find it. I got to find it. Hold on. Um, good gravy. Well, I had a widow's mite over here. Oh, right here. So this is a widow's mite. This is an actual widow's mite from Israel. Uh, a, a man gave me this that was friends with my aunt, and he sent it to me knowing that I was a Christian. This is a widow's mite right here. That's a widow's mite. 
That's what she put in right there, a widow's mite. So you can literally see it right there. Okay. I want you to see that. That's what she gave. And he called unto his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And as he went out of the temple, and one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and uh, actually, let me take a real quick bathroom break and I will be right back. Right back. Give me one second. Because I want to read some more for sure. Hold on, I got to dry off my hands. I do not want to get the Bible pages wet. Give me one second. All right. And as he went, as he went, hold on, I'm checking this real quick. All right. So, and as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And, and here's where we get into like the, the, the alternate Matthew 24 area. You know, I got it highlighted. You know, I, 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 like, I like reading this stuff. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be one, left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately. So there, there we see the names of the people asking him privately. Tell us. Uh, I, I want to say something real quick before I go on, is that we have the four Gospels because it gives us different pieces of the puzzle to put together. It's the same story, all right, from different perspectives. And so you put that together, and you're going to have a very good understanding. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, all right? This is the account of Jesus' life here on this earth, of his ministry. You know what I mean? It's an ama They're four amazing, amazing books. All right. Um, tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled. And Jesus answering them began to say, take heed lest any man deceive you. So be careful on YouTube because there's people out there. Jesus is telling you that there's people that are out there to deceive you that are saying that they're Christians and that aren't. All right. They're going to itch your ears, but they're not going to tell you the truth. OK, for many shall come in my name. That's what they're doing. And he's saying many. It's not a few. It's not a couple. All right. Think about it here. All right. I mean, look at the platforms that people, anybody who thinks they have an understanding of the Bible has an ability to speak now. All right. And a lot of them, I don't hear them reading scriptures. And, and for a while we haven't here, but I'm glad that, that someone brought this up to me uh, uh, to start reading scripture. Because honestly, I am enjoying the praying and the reading of scripture more than I've ever done anything else on this channel, plain and simple. All right. Uh, for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, or in my opinion, they could be saying that they're, they're, they're saying that they're a Christian and shall deceive many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be not troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled, bride of Christ. Don't be troubled for such things must needs be. All right. But the end shall not be yet. 
For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be earthquakes in divers places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. The beginnings of sorrows have been happening for quite some time now. We've been seeing all these things happening at once. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and into synagogues, and they shall be ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. These have been happening in all these foreign countries, man, all the time. It's happening right now as we speak. And the gospel must first be published among all nations and preached. All right. Last time I knew there was only one translation of the Bible that they needed to translate the Bible into. It is. It's. I believe it's been published uh, uh, among all nations now. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. All right, so don't pre-think what you need to speak to these people if they come at you. All right, but whatsoever shall be given to you in that hour that that ye, that speak ye, the things that you're going to say. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. All right, that, that proves that the Holy Ghost will speak for you when you don't know how to. All right, and what's that called? Now the brother shall betray the brother to death. And the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents. Didn't I uh, see that a young man was blowing smoke in his mother's face, marijuana smoke in his mother's face, just to come at her? All right, just to come at her. All right, right there. And shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. That day, that day's coming. It is. All right. And he shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. I mean... That's that's happening. That stuff's happening more than ever. But he that shall endure to the end, the end of what? The end of these things. All right, because these things are happening. They're right here. They're right in our eyes. The same shall be saved. It's not the end of the great tribulation. The, the the end of the things that were just spoken. Read the Bible in its context. Okay, read it in its context. But then, all right, here's the dividing line. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, this is talking to the Jews now, all right, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea, see, they're literally speaking, God's speaking to Jews. He clarified that, okay? First part was speaking to Christians, now he's speaking to Jews. And let him that is in on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein. To take anything out of his house because in Israel, a lot of those houses are so close together, you can literally run on the rooftops and get out of the city. It's not even a joke. I mean, they're so close together. You can hop rooftop to rooftop. So it says, and let him that is on the house top not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, so breastfeeding in those days. All right, and pray that your flight be not in the winter, because you can't take your coat. You got to just go. All right, when that when you see the abomination of desolation take place, and it's I think it's going to be a giant hologram, a, a giant AI hologram. That's my opinion. Everybody's going to see it from all around. When you see that abomination of desolation, it is time to hit to Petra and go find those Bibles that Oral Roberts hid. Uh, uh, you know, well over 30 years ago. All right. But, uh, and pray that your flight be not in the winter for in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created. See, because that's the great tribute, the second half of the great tribulation. That's the antichrist invading Israel, setting up this abomination of desolation. Okay. It literally, it says for in those days, those days, all right, not those years, those days shall be great affliction, such as was, was not from the beginning of the creation, which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, all right, the great tribulation, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, the 144,000 Jews, Messianic Jews, that are going to preach the word of Jesus Christ all over the world in the great tribulation, that are sealed with the mark of God on, uh, uh, on their foreheads, that nothing can hurt them or touch them. All right, for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened those days. And then, if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, here he is, believe him not. In those days, believe him not. All right. All right, for false Christ and false prophets shall arise and shall show signs and wonders. Project Blue Beam, can I get a, can I get an amen on that? It'll be Project Blue Beam. Shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even if it were possible, even the elect. All right, the elect Jews. Okay, because he's speaking to Jews here. But take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all these things. Hold on, I got to get a drink of water. I'm gonna read some comments for a second. Amen, Brittany. Ain't nobody got 
time for that. Sorry about that. But in those days after that, after that tribulation, right there, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. All right. And then shall they see the son of man. So this is ending the end uh, towards the end of the great tribulation is what this is saying. All right. That's literally what this is saying. That the powers uh, that are in heaven shall be shaken and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of power and great glory, great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm getting off track here. Give me a second here. Let me reread this for a second. Um, I misunderstood that. I do apologize, but I'm just going to keep reading. All right. But it is talking to the Jews here. All right. Um, but so so here's the thing. All right. So um, what it's about to say is and talk about is, is when, when uh, during the uh, end of the great tribulation, Okay, God is going to send his angels. I'm just kind of, I'm going to read it here, but he's going to gather his elect, the 144,000 Jews from the four winds. So from the four corners of the earth, northwest, south and east. Okay, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uppermost part of heaven. All right. So he's getting them from the uttermost part of the earth and bringing them up to the uttermost part of heaven where God's coming down with the believers. OK. All right. So it says, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds of power and great glory as the lightning shineth from the east to the west. Amen. And then shall he send his angels, and he shall gather together his elect, 144,000 Jews, speaking to the Jews here, from the four winds, north, west, south, and east, all right, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven, bringing them up. Uh, not, it's not a rapture, but it technically is, all right, where he's bringing, it's not where they get a glorified body or anything like that at that time, uh, even though that time might come for them, but God literally brings them up to where we're at to, to come back to fight in the battle of Armageddon. All right, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye, in like manner, when ye shall see all these things come to pass, know that it is nigh even at the doors. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. And that's even up till the great tribulation. So the generation that saw Israel become a nation again is what the fig tree parable represents. The fig tree is Israel. As the fig tree sprouts forth its leaves, as Israel begins to grow again, which it is, and people, Jews heading back to Israel because of how dangerous it is everywhere else in the world for Jews right now. All right. As those things begin to grow, you're going to know that it's nigh even at the doors and that this generation shall not pass even up till the, the, uh, the great tribulation being fulfilled. All right. Uh, uh, till, till all these things be done. All right. So what it's saying is, is that there's going to be a pre-tribulation rapture and there's going to be a great tribulation. And that generation, which is our grandparents' generation, that's how quickly they're coming. That's how, or that's how quickly Jesus is coming to get his bride in, in the pre-tribulation rapture. All right. It's because, uh, and I'm trying to, I hope I'm saying this right here, is is is, is it, it's so quick because the, the generation has to be alive. All right, that, that World War II generation has to be alive all the way up till the end of the Great Tribulation. My grandma's 91 years old, all right? So we, we, we got to have less than just a couple of years or even less than that, months, days even, uh, for a pre-tribulation rapture. Uh, uh, I don't uh, align with setting dates, but this just kind of gives you a picture how fast it's coming. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So he's saying the Father only, but the only the Father. All right, let me read that again. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour of the pre-tribulation rapture, knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, which is Jesus, only the Father, but the Father. That's it. Take ye, take ye heed, watch and pray. It's okay to watch. Watch for the signs. Pray, ask, ask God to, uh, you know, keep revealing the signs to you for, you know, not when the time is, 
All right, right there. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. So I have people that believe, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to go there, I'm going to upset a lot of people when I say this. There are people out there that believe that the rapture has to happen at midnight you know, are in the evening. Okay. All right. Uh, in the evening, we'll say, all right. But it says right here and in, in my Bible, all right, the 1611 watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house co house comes at even. So at the evening time or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning, you don't know. All right. It, it completely undoes what some people are teaching out there. All right. Uh, because they're they're teaching that it's going to come at a certain time of day. And it says right here, you're not even going to know the time of day that it comes. You're not going to know the day or the hour. OK. All right. And, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So he's saying just watch. He doesn't say predict. He doesn't say, and I don't think there's anything wrong with like timelines, all right, knowing that the time is near, all right, like, you know, maybe even down to the year, but I don't, I, I don't get that far into it. I really don't. But uh, it's saying it right there in the Bible. It's, that's the words of Jesus, my friends. That's the words of Jesus, not mine. I'm just reading it for what it is, a literal translation right there in your face. All right. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief, and the, we're in uh, chapter 14 now. All right. And after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft. So their craftiness, okay? And to put him to death. So they're, they're conspiring against him to put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. So they didn't want the people to stone him to death. All right. So they were that crafty about it, that manipulative and conniving about it, that that's what they did. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be any uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she break the box and poured it on Jesus's head. I said, it says on his head, but it's meaning Jesus. And there were some that had indignation within themselves, which was Judas Iscariot, okay? And said, why was this waste of the, of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for then... 300 pence and have been given to the poor. It's because Judas Iscariot was already robbing the ministry is what he was doing. And they murmured against her. So he, he got all this going and, 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 and murmured against it. So, so understand it's Judas Iscariot is symbolic that there can be 12 Christians, but one of them is going to be conniving, stealing, manipulative, trying to turn the others against other people. All right. So it's about unity. All right. And those people that are constantly bringing up names and things like that, trying to turn you on other people. That's something to watch out for. They're not exposing evil. They're conniving, manipulating, trying to get what they want out of a situation, make things about them and their doctrines, not the doctrines of the Bible, the doctrines of Jesus. OK. And, and you have to look out for those people and you have to have discernment to look out for those people. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble you her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whenever ye will, ye may do them good. But may ye have not always, uh, or but me, ye have not always. Because Jesus was going to die, rise again, all right, and was going to ascend back into heaven. So he's saying, you're not going to have me always, all right? Let her do this. She's doing a good work. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying, all right? The Lord used a woman who at one point was a, a prostitute, all right, that had this item, and he used her to anoint his son for burying. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? What an amazing thing. What a humble and meek thing to forgive a woman of her sins and for God to use her to anoint the son of God. Do you understand the inclination there? Do you understand uh, how big that is? Wow, man. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also uh, that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And we just did. And we just did. We just fulfilled 
the words of Jesus and spoke of Mary Magdalene, this woman who was a sinful woman. You know, we're all sinners, but God, it's what God takes in what he does with you that makes you a man or a woman of God. All right. And Jesus's words were say that people will speak of her in the gospel. And here we are, you know, uh, 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 March 13th, 2024. Thousands of years later after this moment, almost 2,000 years later after this moment, and we're speaking of what Mary Magdalene had done for Jesus and how he, she broke open this box and anointed his head for his burial because even she knew what was coming, all right? It's like it's like all these religious scribes and Pharisees, they don't get the clue. They don't even get it, all right? These churches that are packed full, they don't even get it, but them small little areas. You know, those are humble. That's what it's about, having that humbleness, man. All right. And and, and that these and, and, you know, I, it's amazing to me that even uh, now we're still speaking of what this woman had done for Jesus. Just amazing. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went uh, unto the chief priests and to betray him unto them. So to betray Jesus. And when they had heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. So it was about his convenience. Think about it. You have people that, that want convenience in their own life. They have a doctrine they're trying to push to you that they want convenient to them that fits their YouTube channel. All right. And I'm just using YouTube as an, as an example, but this goes far surpassed YouTube. So you have pe people that have an agenda with you on YouTube to keep you as subscribers, to keep you indoctrinated into their lies, into their mysteries, all right, into their theologies that they've cooked up. OK. All right. And, and, and it's always about their convenience. They will bend the scriptures. They'll bend the scriptures to their will. They'll bend the meaning of truth. So that way you stay on board and you continue on. But when they're wrong, nobody's going to be held accountable. Nobody's going to be held accountable because nobody on YouTube has the guts to stand up against these people when they're wrong. All right. So Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, one of the chief priests, to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad. Oh, yeah, the scribes and the Pharisees just clap. And, oh, we got one of them. We got one of them. And they promised to give him money. And he saw how he might conveniently betray him. All right, so you YouTubers out there who are bending the scriptures, who are bending the Bible to fit your agenda, to keep your thousands of subscribers. All right, now, you, I, I rebuke your convenience. I rebuke how you are betraying Jesus and the words of Jesus, calling him a liar. I rebuke your convenience and your betrayal of the Son of God. I rebuke you. And the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, all right, the lamb, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And, and wheresoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for us. So go make that room ready. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto him, and they made ready the Passover. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, one of you which eateth with me shall betray me. He already knew the betrayal had happened. He already knew Jesus Iscariot. All right. He already knew Jesus Iscariot was going to betray him. All right. And he says, and they began to be sorrowful and to, and to say unto him one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I? I bet you Judas Iscariot didn't because he knew he did. All right. And it says right here, and he answered and said unto them, it is one of the 12 that dippeth with me in this dish, dippeth the bread in this dish. The son of man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Right there, woe to you channels who are betraying the Son of God to your convenience, to fit your agenda, to keep your thousands of subscribers. I rebuke that mindset. I'm going to speak truth no matter how many people I lose. I lose them all the time because they don't want to hear truth because they're listening to other YouTube channels that don't tell them the truth, that are speaking convenient theocracies to them, that keep them bound in deceit. I, I rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. All right? 
Good were it for that man if he had never been born. You are a Judas Iscariot. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, Take ye, this is my body. And he took the cup. And when he had given things, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine. Right there. All right. No more of the fruit of the vine. It wasn't wine. It was the fruit of the vine. Unto that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So he, God, even at Jesus said, oh, look, all the people that left the live chat, that's fine. They don't like the truth. But I'll tell you right now, here's the thing. Jesus is not taking a sip out of anything until we are at the marriage supper. Until we are at the marriage supper. You know what I'm saying? All right. That's what I'm saying right there. Like Jesus is literally, you know, going without until he is with us, man, until he's with us. All right. I will, I will not drink any more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said unto them, all ye shall be offended. Oh, yeah, they're offended, Lord Jesus, because of me this is night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. And that's what happens. You ever notice that? A channel gets exposed and the sheep scatter. Look at that. But after that, I am risen. I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, ye will not I. And Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, that thou shalt deny me three times. It says thrice, but three times. <clears throat> but he spoke the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. I'm going to take a drink real quick. Thank you, Jesus, for that water, Lord. I love cold water, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. <clears throat> and he had taken... And he taketh him with, uh, with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. So he's, he was sorrowful. He's, he's broken. He knew what was coming. And saith unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. So tarry, 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 tarry with him. Tarry with Christ. Quit thinking that you got things figured out. Tarry with the Lord. Dwell in the presence of the Lord. Watch with him. All right, watch with him. And he went forward a little and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. <clears throat> and he said, on, and he saith, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not that I will, but what thou wilt. All right, and the opposite of what Satan's teachings are is as do as thou wilt. All right, but Jesus says, but what thou wilt, my heavenly Father. He's saying that. Look at the complete reversal and opposite, right? And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter and Simon, Sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch with me one hour? Could you not watch with Jesus one hour, people? Could you not watch with Jesus one hour? Could you not watch with Jesus one hour? I want to say real quick, I just checked, because I want to prove a point. I just had seven unsubscribers. Seven unsubscribers, people. Seven. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. Found them asleep again in their own dreams, and their own doctrines, and their own comfort, and their own convenience. For their eyes were heavy. Neither was they want to answer him. So they didn't want to answer him either. And he cometh the third time and said unto them, Sleep on now. Sleep on. Sleep on now. I want you to hear that. He cameth unto them a third time finally and said unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately while he yet spake, cometh Judas, 
one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and stabs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, the same as he, take him and lead him away safely. <laughs> That's messed up, man. And he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever shall I kiss, the same he is he, take him and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goeth straight away to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear, which was Peter. <clears throat> All right. And, and, and think about it, you know, like literally Judas betrayed or betrayed Jesus with a kiss. That's how they'll come to you. Mwah, mwah. Real convenient, real cute. And Jesus, I'm sorry, I get a little bitter. I, I absolutely despise the wolves in sheep's clothing. I despise them. Peter cut off his ear, and Jesus answered and said unto thee, Are ye come out against a thief with swords and with stabs to take me? I was daily with you in the temple, teaching you, and ye took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. All the disciples ran. They all ran. <clears throat> and there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young man laid hold on him. And he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. So literally, the, no one wanted to stick around and follow through with Jesus. They didn't. They left him to himself. They slept and then they left him. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. Scribes and the Pharisees. <clears throat> and Peter <clears throat> followed him afar off. So he kept a distance, but he followed him even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death. And found none, for many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. So everybody's talking junk about Jesus, but not one of their stories lined up. And there arose a certain and bear, and there arose a, arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, "We heard him say, I will destroy this temple, that it is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands." And he's talking about his body. Not the temple of God. He's talking about his body. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which the, these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, and I mean, this whole time he's being beaten and spit on and, 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 and scorned and mocked, you know. It was a, it was, it was a, it was a days-long thing. The crucifixion of Jesus. And I think it's funny how a whole bunch of people leave the live chat when we start talking about the crucifixion of Jesus. Because people don't like conviction. People don't want to know what y'all took part in. What we took part in. We all were there. But he held his peace and answered nothing. And again the high priest asked him and saith unto them, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need we any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy, what think ye? And think all the... Con so they're all coming together and they're murmuring with each other and trying to convince each other of this crime. All right? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. Because he spoke truth. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him. So they were smothering him. They weren't just spitting on him and beating him. They were smothering him. They covered his face. And to buffet him and to say unto him, Pro prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. So they covered his face. They didn't want him to see who was hitting him. And they said, prophesy who's hitting you. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warn warming himself, or it says warning himself, she looked upon him and said, and, and thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crowed. And a maid saw him again and began to say to them, 
that this that that stood by this is one of them and he denied it again and a little after that they sat that they stood by said again to peter sure surely thou art one of them for thou art a galilean and thy speech agreeeth thereto so he had the accent of a galilean but he began to curse so literally to curse and to swear saying i know not this man of whom ye speak and the second time the cock crew and Peter called to the mind the words that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crows, twice thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. He wept, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? And straight away in the morning of the chief straight of the straight away in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And bound Jesus, and carried him away, and delivered him to, to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering saith unto him, Thou sayest it. And the, and the chief priest accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. I'm sorry. It breaks my heart what they did to Jesus. It breaks my heart what we did to Jesus. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold how many things they witness against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at the feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Bar Barabbas, which lay bound with them, that had made insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. So this is Barabbas during this insurrection of Jews against Rome. Barabbas had committed murder, probably killed a Roman. All right, and the multitude, or 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 or, or uh, uh, someone who had aligned with the Romans, and the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done unto them. All right, but Pilate answered them, saying, "Will ye that I release unto you the King of the Jews?" For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him in envy for envy. So, so Pilate knew that the priests were envying Jesus. All right, and that's why they were delivering up to Pilate to, to be killed. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, What will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away and the hall called pre Praetorium. And they called together the whole band and they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. So they literally smushed it into his head and began to salute him. Hail the king of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees, worshiped him and mocked him. That's what they're doing. They're mocking him. And when they had mocked him and they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him, and they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, all right, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross, all right, and they bring him. One thing I want to say real quick, all right, one thing I want to say, when they scourged Jesus, Pilate had him whipped, okay, to try to... Uh, appease the scribes and the Pharisees and the priests of the temple, all right? I, I mean, they, they literally had him whipped to try to appease that situation, and it still wasn't enough. They wanted him dead, all right? Satan wanted him dead. And they bring, and it shows who Satan controls. They, he controls the, that religious stuff. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And, and they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. When they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the subscription, superscription of his accusation was written over uh, him, the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, and one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Sorry, Jesus, for what we did to you, Lord. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. 
Likewise, also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land. Seems to me it was an eclipse, a solar eclipse. Until the ninth hour. Hold on, I got to blow my nose. And as the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Heartbreaking, just heartbreaking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And son of them that stood by, when they heard it, said, Behold, he calleth Elias. And one ran and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let alone let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. And the, and the veil, his, you know, his anointing too. I mean, his anointing so that way the church could have it. You know, I mean, I don't mean like he gave it up to give it away and not have it himself, but he gave it so that way we could have it. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And we've talked to that veil in the temple. I want to cover this for a second. All right. I want to cover this for a second. Okay. Listen, that veil that separated the inner court from the Holy of Holies, the holy place, was was a couple feet thick. It was a heavy curtain. It wasn't something it took multiple guys to move this thing just to allow one priest to go into this area one time a year, one Levite priest. It was a thick curtain. And it says, And the veil of the temple was rent, split, torn in two, in twain, in two, from the top to the bottom. And when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There was also women looking afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the, uh, the last, and of, uh, I don't know that word, and of Solomon, or Salome, who also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered unto him, and many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. And now when the even was come, because it was the preparation that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph's, Joseph of Arimathea and an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and, and, and craved the body of Jesus. So he wanted, he wanted, uh, he said, Pilate, let me take the body of Jesus. And Pilate marveled if he were already dead and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph, and he brought he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in the linen and laid him in the sepulchre. All right, the sepulchre is a tomb where they would lay the body to decompose. Someone would go in later on to sweep up the decomposed, you know, bones and you know, uh, uh, all, everything that's decomposed, and they put it in a box and they put that box in the in a tomb where there was multiple boxes. All right, that's what they would do in, in, in Israel. All right, so they wrapped him in fine linen and they laid uh, him in a sepulcher, which was hewn out of a rock and rolled a stone under the door of the sepulcher. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, beheld where he was laid. Uh, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first of first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher. And the rising of the sun, they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. So some big, huge stone. And not a lot of people know that they sealed that stone. They, like, sealed it. All right? There was a, a, a wax ring that was pressed into that, you know, to show that it was sealed. They, they literally sealed it shut. And there was a seal of wax that was also put on it that if that break, they know it's been broken into. All right. And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, 
which was crucified, he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter and, and that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. Oh, I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps, people. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for, the, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. The woman who broke that alabaster box and in 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 the uh, put it over him. I want to show you something real quick. Hold on, hold on. This is an alabaster container. This is what alabaster looks like. Okay, and in it, I do have some spike nard. Okay, the same stuff that Mary Magdalene used to anoint Jesus. And I'm telling you, this stuff is the bee's knees. You can't get this. I don't know where you get this now, but it, it. Oh wow! I mean, I'm telling you, to to be anointed by something like that, to uh, to be even in the room with Jesus when he was anointed with that, wow! You know what I mean? Wow! All right. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, I lost my place. Where was I? Um, all right. Give me a second here. I'm getting back to it. All right, now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. This woman had seven devils and Jesus cast them out. And this was the woman that broke the alabaster box and poured the anointing oil, the spike nard, onto Jesus' head and anointed him for, for to, to anoint his body for burial. You know? And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept, and they... When they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. They didn't believe it. After that, he appeared in another form. All right? Showing that there's transfiguration there. That once you're in your glorified body, you can appear in another form if you need to. All right? Unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the re residue, neither believed they them. A lot of disbelief. A lot of disbelief. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat in meat and, and, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them, which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye unto all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. For he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Even the stuff that they're trying to put in our food and all that stuff now. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs. With signs, let me say it again, with signs following. Amen. Amen. And tomorrow we'll start the book of Luke. We'll start the book of Luke tomorrow. I really enjoyed reading that with you guys. I really enjoyed reading that. I, I was hoping to, to, to read where, you know, he had Peter confess uh, Jesus three times, you know, he says, do you love me, Peter? And Peter says, of course I do, Lord. And he did it again and he did it again, you know, and, and it's and it was making up for, uh, uh, you know, his denying Jesus three times, you know, and, and it's just so precious because God is so patient with us. He's so patient with us, isn't he? You know, now I know there's new people in the chat that are listening. Anybody uh, uh, have any, uh, um, you know, yeah, amen, Marky Mark. Feed my sheep. Amen. Uh, does anybody have any prayer requests? You know, anything at all? Because I don't want to leave anybody that came here for prayer without prayer. Definitely don't want to do that. God bless, honeybee. I hope you have a good day. Enjoy that garden. I will be there with you, too. We pray for Daisy in Jesus' mighty name. We rebuke sickness and whatever is going on in Daisy's life. We pray for victory over the situation. We pray for life. We pray for healing in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be with uh, 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 Daisy. 
uh, that you will bring that sickness out of her, Lord. And I just rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray for life and victory and healing in Jesus' name. I pray for Arletta Moore, that you just meet her where she's at, Lord. You know what's going on, Jesus. Uh, you comfort her. You be with her. You strengthen her through her situations. Send your Holy Spirit to be with her, cover her with your blood, Lord. And just help her through whatever she's got going on in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuke the ear infection that's in Marky Mark in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for healing. I pray for uh, 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 the, 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 the itching and the draining and whatever's going on, the aching, the, the stabbing pains in his ear, that those will go in Jesus' mighty name. And we just pray for uh, uh, life in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for healing in Jesus' mighty name and God's people. Amen and amen. Rhonda Smor Smoroski says, do you have devotions this time every day? Uh, it's not always at the exact same time, but I try to do it around the, the same time. So, uh, you know, I, I do my best, but there's no promises. You know, I just kind of whenever the, whenever I'm able, whenever, the you know, whenever I feel the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, um, Pamela Hughes, I'm curious. No, I have not. No, I have not. I bet it's hard to. I bet it's hard to. Uh, my Uncle Johnny, who has chosen his sin over Jesus, he used to be on fire with the Holy Spirit, but these days he blasphemes it. Pray for him to come back to the Lord. I pray that Johnny will come back to his first love in Jesus Christ. I, I pray for life and victory over the, the sin and evil that he's chosen. I pray the blinders of the world will fall off his eyes, and the scales will fall off his eyes, and then he will see the Son of Man once again shining with power and great glory, and that he will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life, and that the Lord will call him back to his first love in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. We pray for Rhonda's left ear, Lord, that you open it up, that you allow her to hear uh, uh, all the tinging and all the, 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 the sounds that she hears that aren't really there. Uh, we pray, Jesus, that you will heal that ear, Lord. Everything that's going on with that ear, we pray that healing over it in Jesus' mighty name. It, uh, uh, any of the tinnitus and all that stuff that happens, uh, 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 the ringing in the ears, we rebuke it in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray that that ear will come back to normal at once. The Holy Spirit uh, be upon her ear, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, we pray for Alex Hernandez that he will have a permanent and safe home for him and his family, Lord, that you will open doors uh, and that you will strengthen his family unit, that you will bring them into a closer relationship with you, Lord, and that you will uh, make a way where there seems to be none, Lord. I pray, Jesus, that you will use somebody to open a door to them, uh, to help them to have a safe place to live in Jesus' mighty name, and that the, the place that they're at that's not safe, Lord, that you make it safe until that time. I pray that uh, 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 peace uh, prosperity and protection over Alex and his family in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name. Um, no problem, honeybee stings. I give God all the glory in, 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 in all of that in Jesus' mighty name. But I thank you. It's amazing how dogwood trees bloom before Resurrection Day. I don't, I didn't know that. Um, praying for your family. Amen. Amen. One day. Uh, Swedish Lutheran, uh, I'll tell you right now, you're sane today if you want it. You're sane today if you want it, but you got to believe. Got to believe. I'm asking for prayers on my sleep. I have had trouble sleeping past five months uh, since my husband passed. All right. <clears throat> Here's the thing. One thing that I'm not going to do, Tammy, is continue to dwell in the past. Okay? If you need prayer, I'm going to pray. All right? I promise you. Uh, uh, we'll be praying. But I want to encourage you. Uh, to remember your husband in a good way, not remembering, you know, the cancer in, in, in him passing away because he's made whole in Jesus right now. He don't he don't have cancer no more. So you don't need to remember the cancer. You need to remember him before that. And as he is now, you know, he's 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 he's, he's with Jesus now. You know, there's no more pain. There's no more suffering. And I, and I want you to have peace in that, sister. But I also pray that you get the sleep that you uh, rightly deserve. Uh, I rebuke uh, insomnia in Jesus' mighty name, and I pray for healing over that situation. I pray that Tammy will be able to find rest. I pray for her children, Lord, that you walk with them, talk with them, speak with them, minister to them, send angels to surround them and be with them in Jesus' mighty name, uh, that you will encourage their family unit, that you will strengthen it in Jesus' name. Uh, uh, and, and I just ask you, Lord, just to give them peace and give them love, mercy, and grace and joy. Uh, even in the hardships, Lord, even in the hardships, Lord, it's difficult. It's very difficult. But I know that you're capable and able, Lord, and I believe that you will. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray for Tammy. Amen and amen. Uh, I am not a good man. I, I'm a sinner. 
uh, Marky Mark. Um, the, the work that I do is just the things that I need to do. It's what God puts on my heart to do. Uh, I, is it a good work? I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm just doing what I what God's putting on my heart to do. Uh, but I'm not a good man. I'm a sinner just like you, just like everybody else in this chat room. Uh, you know, um, I, I just love Jesus. I just love Jesus. I love that he saved my soul. All right. Despite me nailing nails in his hands and in his feet and pushing a crown of thorns upon his head and whipping him on a post until his guts hung out, you know, until his bones were showing, until his ribs were showing, you know. I pray for crying in the wilderness over him and his uh, uh, autistic child. I pray for peace for them. And I pray that his child will continue uh, the photography uh, hobby that he's doing, that it eventually will turn into a business and that people will pick up his photographs and use them uh, uh, for God's glory and that uh, he'll be able to be paid through that because it's something that he enjoys. And I pray that in Jesus' mighty name for crying in the wilderness. Thank you for your prayers for my family. I appreciate that a lot. Possible to kill a fig tree. They just keep growing back and again and again. They should have given that should have given them a clue, a very big clue. I agree, Pamela. I agree. That's a good one. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where unto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Fight the good fight. Lay hold on eternal life. Where unto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Got me there, Marky Mark. Got me there. In agreement with all of these prayers, family, the prayers of a righteous man prevails much. Praise Jesus. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Josh. And I'm for prayers and fellowship. God bless you, Daisy. God bless you. Um, the illness and pain are a very worldly, fleshly thing. Believe he's in heaven and peace and good health with Jesus. Amen, Sarah. Amen. Praying in agreement, brothers and sisters. Uh, Clayton Joseph's back again. Back in the bed. Back on the channel again. <laughs> thank you, Susan Mine. God bless you. Yes, I thank Jesus for his forgiveness. Amen, Alex. Amen. Oh, Pamela did not know about the fig tree. Yeah, that was really interesting, Pamela. That really was. I would love to have a fig tree in my yard. I love fig newtons. They're awesome. They're really good. Um, yeah, I love Brother Clayton. So any other prayer requests? Anything at all? We got we got anything going on? <clears throat> I don't mind staying on for just a little bit longer. I don't. I don't mind at all. I do have to get going on the garden eventually, but, you know, God's people are, are important too. Yes, providing food for my family is important, but, you know, I'm, I'd say I'm pretty well ahead of the game right now when I plant during a Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> <clears throat> Pray for Pamela Hughes for healing and protection over her family uh, and over our family here. Uh, it, it, we just pray for uh, uh, peace and protection and, and love, mercy, and grace and joy will overflow in everybody's day uh, and everybody's family. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray for healing for everybody's family, Lord. I pray that you just uh, uh, answer all the, the, the asks and the wants and the needs of, of God's people here today, Lord. Uh, I just pray that uh, uh, that we'll be in one accord with each other and prepared when you come, Jesus, uh, that, that we are accounted worthy to escape all these things to come, that our lamps will be filled with oil, Lord Jesus, that you, uh, we have the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen and amen. Arletta Moore says, I want to say thanks for doing this. I don't really have a Christian friend, and this helps. Arletta Moore, you're not just a friend here. You're family here. This is a Christian family, and you're a part of it, Arletta Moore. We love you, sister. We love you. Pray for my father-in-law. He lives with us. He's been grieving for all those prayers. I ask him to move out. God's will be done because I feel horrible about it. Dear Jesus, Heavenly Father, I pray uh, for Vanessa's father-in-law. Uh, that he uh, find a new place to live, that you will open doors for him to be able to be where he needs to be, or that you will help Vanessa and her husband have patience with him. Whatever your will is, Lord, I pray that that will be done, Jesus, uh, as Vanessa has asked. Uh, I pray uh, that you will uh, uh, help Vanessa and help Romeo uh, be encouraged in you, Lord, to have uh, patience and love and mercy and grace in their hearts. Uh, and same uh, with their father-in-law. Uh, I pray that he 
uh, breaks of his old habits in Jesus' mighty name, and that the things that are standing in the way of family unity, that they will go in Jesus' name. Anything that's not of the Lord will go in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray for peace and protection over their household in all forms in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, God bless you, Tammy. It was good to have you here, sister. It was good to have you here. Absolutely an encouragement to have you here. <clears throat> Yes, amen, Abba Father, amen. Thank you for your word, Lord. <clears throat> That's right, Lord. you are a beautiful sister. We love you, sister. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. Amen, Susan, mine, yours too. <clears throat> I've been talking so much, I'm getting congested. <clears throat> Good gravy. You're welcome, Arletta. You're welcome. <clears throat> yeah, I'm really excited about the garden this year. It's going to be fun. I've been talking with my wife, and uh, I'm not going to lie. Some we're not we're not past getting into you know some garbage picking. Someone said something out nice. We're going to snatch it up. And uh, someone set out some, uh, some like, they're like lawn chairs. They're like, you know, for like a patio, some patio chairs. They just don't have the cushions. And I told my wife, I said, wouldn't it be nice if the Lord provides one of those round tables with the umbrella? And then we have those chairs and get cushions for them somehow. Uh, that's, that's, that's not a, a need, but it's a want. And I'll tell you what, I eventually would love to, to have something like that because we have a cement patio out back right by the garden. I said it would love, it would be so cool to have company over and have the grill going and us hanging out and, and enjoying the shade and the breeze. Cause we get a lot of breeze through here because we live close to a lake and uh, you know, it's just amazing. Just amazing. I, I, I was like, wouldn't that be fun? So <clears throat> Yeah, I'm not afraid to admit I do a little bit of dumpster diving. I'll be honest with you. Me and my wife used to go on dates dumpster diving. We used to go to other cities. And, and I'd be the one jumping in the dumpster. But boy, oh boy, you'd be surprised what we'd find. And we'd have yard sales, you know, selling the things that we found that we didn't need. And we'd sell them for dirt cheap. And, and the things that, uh, some things we'd just donate to different people and whatnot. Um, yeah, I'll be honest with you. I'm not past it. I'm not past dumpster diving. I ain't past it at all. You know, me and my wife, we've we've had some some struggles financially in the past. I, you know, we call it free fifty free. <laughs> That's what we call it, free fifty free. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest with you. There's nothing. There's no shame in it, in my opinion. I I don't get ashamed over stuff like that. You know. Thank you, Alex. That means a lot. That really does. That means a lot. You know, it really does. Me too, Susan Mine. Me too. <clears throat> Thank you, Harper Ann. I, I, Harper, weren't you talking about emailing me? Did you already email me or do you want me to wait for an email? I didn't know. I, th I think you're the one. We go garbage picking, take stuff that's out for the trash pick. No shame in it. I'll be honest with you. I've gone as far as jumping in the dumpster. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. People can make fun of me or laugh at me or whatever, but there ain't no shame in it for me, man. At all. At all. I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. It, 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 we didn't, like, pick trash. I mean, it's not like we were eating out of the trash, but it was it was, it was was fun. You'd always find some stuff that they'd throw away. People would take back stuff that was still good, and they just throw it in the dumpster. You know, you never knew what you're going to find. We found a treadmill one time in the dumpster that worked just fine. We found a, the, the vacuum that we use right now, we found in the dumpster. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not worried about it. Yep. Well, our Goodwill, we, a lot of trash compactors they use around here. Yep. 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 It's, it was uh, what? It's a really expensive vacuum, too, that we have, and we got it for free out of the dumpster. Yeah. Clean it up ourselves, and it was as good as new. My wife can take anything apart and fix anything. Something goes wrong with the dryer, she fixes it. I don't know nothing about that stuff, but her dad was smart as a whip and taught her a lot of different stuff, just about technology. And she knows she could, I, she could literally deconstruct a UFO and put it back together again. You know, she really could. 
She's super smart. I got a super smart wife. Super cool lady. And she's fun too. Like, and, and we're just, we're humble about it. You know, we're just humble about it. Plain and simple. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I, I got my eye on like Facebook Marketplace or something like that for free, you know, tables with the umbrella thing. You know, I know God's going to provide it. You know, I would love to have it this year so that way we could enjoy just being a, me and my wife love our backyard. We uh, we really love our backyard. We love being back there. We love looking at the garden. We love grilling. We want to have her grandmother and uncle over. We don't have a lot of friends or family around here. You know, barely anybody comes around. You know, uh, this interaction with people on End Times Talk is really my bigger interaction with people. I don't I don't hang out with people in this in this town. I, I, I really don't. Uh, you know, I, I've done my whole, you know, trying to, you know, teach people about the Lord around here. And, you know, people either listen or they didn't, you know, so I went online. But it's uh, we, we really we really enjoy our yard. We enjoy being home. That's a vacation for us because we get lots of breeze. It's like a wind tunnel in our backyard. Really, really a uh, nice place to hang out. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm probably going to hop off of here. Uh, any other prayer requests real quick? I don't want to leave anybody hanging. God bless you, Rhonda. Yeah, I really don't. I don't hang out with too many people. I talk to people on the phone a lot. I have a lot of friendships on the phone. Uh, I, I, the, the closest person that I'm friends with in my area that I, that I would hang out with is like 25, 30 miles away. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And the next one's like 45 miles away, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't really hang out with a lot of people around here. I just don't a lot of drugs around here. All right. Thanks for fellowship. Bible study. No problem. I'm, you know, thanks for letting me read the Bible to you. I should be thanking you guys for sticking around, wanting to listen to the word of God. You know what I mean? That's what, that's, that's what's awesome about this. I'll read the Bible regardless, but to have a bunch of people that want to hear it. That's what I'm, that's what it's about, man. Coming together in, in the name of Christ. I love each and every one of you so much. You guys are great people. All of you, you guys are my family. I think so highly of you guys. Uh, you guys are true warriors in Christ. Uh, please don't forget to remember to pray for Rick. He really does need the prayers. Um, and um, so does his family. And uh, uh, just thank you all for, for being a part of this with me. You guys are just as much a, a part of End Times Talk as, as I am. You know, this is this is a place where we can gather in the name of the Lord. I love it. I, ch I, I would choose these kind of lives well over. Uh, uh, any, you know, conspiracy videos or anything like that exposing the enemy. These moments where we get to hang out like this and, and talk about the Lord, uh, th this is the true blessings, man. Like, and people, most people miss out on it. We'll get 200 people that want, you know, at, at, at any given time in a live that talks about the news. I could go live in just a few minutes, talk about the news, and I'm telling you right now, we'd have 200 people in there. But, you know, we get 30 to 50 people in these lives, and it's humble, and this is what I like. This is what I like. This is what End Times Talk is all about. All right, let's pray before we get off of here. Dear Jesus, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the fellowship together, Lord. We thank you for the worship together. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your son that died on the cross for us. We thank you for all the things that happened to him, Lord, that, that, that he took our place, Lord. He took our place, Jesus, and he, and he paid the ransom. Uh, he paid our hostage ransom, Lord. And I pray, uh, uh, Jesus, that you will uh, help us to be worthy to escape all these things that are that are to come, Lord Jesus. We ask you to forgive us of all of our sins, Lord, knowing and unknowing Jesus. Help us to walk in your footsteps, Lord. Help us to deny our flesh. Help us to take up our cross daily, Lord. Help us to take it up daily, Lord, and deny our flesh the things that it wants. Help us to crucify our flesh and to, and to hold it accountable in Jesus' mighty name. I pray against addiction. I pray against uh, uh, evil thoughts. I pray against evil dreams in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for peace in, in, in God's people's hearts, Lord. Uh, I pray for your, for your Holy Spirit to just move in everybody's lives. I pray for their families uh, and their children and their property and their vehicles in Jesus' mighty name and their belongings, Lord, that you'll protect them all and keep them safe. 
in Jesus' mighty name, and that you will let not one hair on their heads be harmed, Lord. I pray for anybody that's dealing with sickness, Lord. We pray for good health for them in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray that God's uh, people will live a long, happy, healthy life until you're coming, Lord. And we pray even so come, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord, not just for what you do for us, but for who you are. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. All right. I, you guys know that's up. You guys know what's up. You know, I appreciate each and every single one of you. Um, amen, Marky Mark. Amen. I appreciate each and every single one of you. May God bless you all and may God keep you. And please don't forget to go out and change this world in which you live.